You're listening to the Gamecaster. 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 Welcome back, gamers, to the Gamecasters, where we cast on and on for you about all different sorts of gamey meats like ostrich, elk, moose, natalie, venison, and buffalo. <laughs> this is not to be confused with that board game show that talks about farts. What are they called? The Lame Blasters or something? Literally, <laughs> all they do is make inside jokes based on movies or TV shows, and well, the girl comes up with all the original content. <laughs> anyway, welcome terrible. to episode 83. <laughs> Mr. Soylent is good people. So it's been a short seven days since you last heard our sultry voices, and I've been forced to put more more and more quarters into CastBot, the machine I bought on eBay that generates content for us to talk about. So please donate on Patreon so I don't have to start coming up with things myself. The last thing I came up with on my own was, are people actually named Ebenezer or is that just Scrooge? <laughs> so if you don't want nonsense like that worming its way into your now weekly feed, then please send help. Send it quick and send a lot of it. The Jack Rabbit from Adam and Eve isn't going to buy itself for Natalie's surprise day of relaxation I'm planning. Ooh. So you're excited about Ooh. the jackrabbit? You want the jackrabbit? That's oh. a sex thing. Do you know what no. the jackrabbit is? I just thought, I you just... heard surprising day yeah. of that. Yeah, I like that thing. part. I think it was. It's a sex thing. It was a complete. A yeah, thing. the jackrabbit. I think is a pretty well known jackrabbit. <laughs> yeah, Jack's a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? So, yeah, Jeff. I think I've heard of that. Okay. Jeff, have you ever been in a situation where you were unforcibly forced to do something against your will? Unforcibly forced. Like, nobody literally forced you to do something, but you felt in your you felt soul, like, this is what like, I need to I do in this to moment do right this. now. There's I no other to. way out. I, yeah. yeah, I can't get out of this. Okay. Natalie and I find ourselves in such a situation. Uh, the Monday after Nerf. <laughs> oh. so, I was like, right. where are you going with this? <laughs> You'll find out. Here we go. So Jason and Janelle stayed with us. Yes. And first of all, before I say anything here, they are the most wonderful people yes. inside and out. I was all into their inside. Okay. Um, wow. So <laughs> meeting them in person was honestly even more awesome than I thought it would be. I love them. They are so great. I'm saying all that because before I tell you what happened, I need you all to understand the massive amounts of love we have for them as people. So that when you hear this tale of cringy embarrassment for us, oh. you will realize that these are also people that you would want in your company and not maniacal sociopaths hell bent on watching their dear friends suffer in agony and despair. <laughs> so here's what happened. Okay. Monday morning... We're all getting ready to go to the airport. Okay, Janelle and Jason yep. are uh, are leaving that day, right? So Janelle's taking a shower, and Natalie and I are sitting on the couch kind of relaxing before we have to leave. Jason's in the kitchen and says casually to us, Hey, guys, I'm going to make some smoothies. Would, would you guys like a blueberry spinach smoothie? And we're like, sure, excitedly. We have healthy smoothies all day like that all the time. They usually consist of things like almond milk, blueberries, strawberries, bananas, honey, sometimes a little bit of peanut butter. Uh, and a couple leaves of spinach, okay? So we were ready and very excited that he was going to make us these smoothies. He's a guest in our home, and he's making yeah. us the smoothies. So we were, like, pretty nice. excited. Can't wait. Well, <laughs> that excitement quickly turned to panic and anguish as we watched Jason, whose back is to us from the kitchen, make the smoothies. And, and I want to illustrate his basic 11-step process, okay? Okay. Step one, <laughs> add three to five blueberries to the blender. That's it? Step three two. to five blueberries. Okay. <laughs> that might be too much. Step okay. two, add 10 to 12 fistfuls of spinach to the blender. <laughs> Step three, add tap water to the blender. Step four, blend. Step five, look in the blender and think to yourself, hmm, this could probably use a bit more spinach. Step six, stuff two more handfuls of spinach into the blender and tampen it down with the butt end of a wooden spoon. Step seven, blend again. Step eight, look into the blender and think to yourself, hmm, this could probably use a bit more spinach. <laughs> Step nine, stuff two more handfuls of spinach <laughs> into the blender, tampening it down with the butt end of a wooden spoon. Step 10, blend. And finally, step 11, serve. Enjoy. <laughs> Natalie and I watched so in horror as, uh, as our fight or flight responses were now engaging. I cannot describe to you how terrifying it is to hear the crinkling of seven pounds of spinach leaves <laughs> being crushed into a 64-ounce <laughs> blender with the ass end of a large wooden spoon by a six-foot, two-inch man blended and then the same noise repeated over and over again we kept exchanging these like frightened glances and mouthing like, oh no what's happening? under our breath well, first it was like 
that's a lot of spinach. And then I'm like, he he's put, putting he more putting, spinach well, in. He was putting water. And I was like, water? I've never had a smoothie with water. And he's putting, you guys, I was like, Natalie, he's putting more spinach in. Is that more spinach? <laughs> there's more. He's looking at it and thinking there's not enough spinach in this somehow. Yep. So Jason is like the nicest. He's so nice. Sweetest. Uh, we're like. Happiest, go luckiest, gratefulest, kind heartiest person there is. If you ever meet or are lucky enough to meet Jason Bobo, this guy <laughs> is. I, yeah, he's a shining he's, beacon of yeah, positive energy. He is like the kindest guy ever. And so we're Ask over here. Make you a smoothie. We're <laughs> over here <laughs> acting like he was sharpening the blade he was about to cut our heads off with. You know, like <laughs> I was trembling with fright and dread at this blended water salad that was being like dumped into a cup for my immediate consumption, wondering how the fuck <laughs> I was going to do this. We're like, we have to eat this. I was like, getting the dry heaps <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, we were kind of like, oh, well, what are we going to do? Like, this is the end, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like his recipe for his smoothie was somewhere around eight or 9,000 leaves of spinach to one to two blueberries. Okay. Uh, blended with tap water. Needless to say, that was not what I was expecting when he said, hey, do you guys want a blueberry spinach smoothie? <laughs> so we watch as he pours this viscous green sludge into a glass. And it doesn't, like, pour. And then can and instead like, like kind of like out. gloops, yeah. yeah, like into the cup all at once. <laughs> yeah. And he walks over, and we haven't we've only seen his back to this point. He walks over, he turns around with the smile on his face, like he was just having the raddest day of all time and didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> and Natalie and I are here literally sweating and clutching each other for comfort before the inevitable esophageal assault happens to us. <laughs> he puts the cup down on the table before us and gives us this nice guttural, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then says, Oh, 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 by the way, it's not really that sweet or anything, but, you know, just really good quality ingredients. We somehow managed to get out like a synchronized thanks that any 911 operator would understand to mean, oh, these people are being held against their will. We need to send help now. (laughs) (laughs) So Jason turns his back to go clean up the forest he just chopped down in my kitchen. And Natalie and I take one last look at each other like, I love you. I love you so much. (laughs) Goodbye. (laughs) I then immediately take my cup and pour it into Natalie's and make a loud, ah, noise. (laughs) It was instinction. (laughs) Natalie was so angry because now it looked like I had just drank half this thing and she hadn't even started it. It was perfect. In fact, I'm the one who drank some of it. I drank I was like, just she was tastes, like, it literally it just like tastes like spinach, spinach water. <laughs> yeah, spinach water. Yeah. We watched as Jason drank his, but it looked more like one of those videos of a seagull eating a live rat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like he's just lifting his head up in the air, and it, you see the body of the rat slide down the like gullet, and it just looked fun for nobody. I do think he enjoyed it somehow, though. And Janelle had one he too, and they drank yeah. it fine. So at this point, Janelle comes downstairs, and we were like, oh. Darn, we got to get going to the airport. So we left the cups of algae on the table and went to the airport. When I came home, Natalie had put the cups in the sink, but you didn't jump it down. So I was pouring, I started pouring them down the drain, you know, and I could have sworn I heard a tiny ew come from the disposal. <laughs> I thought maybe you wanted to try it after you got back. What's that? I thought maybe you wanted to try it after you That's got back. That's why you put them oh, in nice. the sink for me? Oh, nice. So I asked Janelle, I was like, listen, I, this is like, the funniest thing, I was like, hey, so she's back in she's back in Utah now for a few days. And I'm yeah. like, okay, something happened that I have to tell you about. <laughs> and I was like, can I please talk about this on the show? Because this was, for us, one of the, it was like the most hilarious, terrifying experience that we've had. Um, and she was like, yeah, I guess we smoothie differently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up with you, man? Well... No smoothies in my no life. No smoothies that come into your no, life? Maybe a spinach <laughs> cabbage smoothie or something <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, we're watching spinach some new. Kale. We're watching a new show. On oh, Netflix. what are you watching? We're watching Archive 81. Oh. Someone was just talking about that. Is that kind of like a horror I think show? Yeah, Joe it's was suspense. telling us about it. Yeah, it's, so it's based on a podcast, which I guess came out a few years ago. And there, it was... Of I haven't listened name? to the podcast. I yeah, saw the, the trailer of it. Yeah, I don't know if the podcast know. is like acting, right? It's got to be acting because the show is supernatural almost horror yeah. kind of thing yeah mm-hmm. it's really suspenseful it's not like a lot it's not jump scares or anything like that but Good, everything is kind scares. of like suspenseful of what's gonna happen so like a thriller more like yeah. you think yeah and it's the 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 premise of it's kind of cool it's this guy gets hired by this person to restore these videotapes right there's this old videotapes they're all like damaged right they're they have damage yeah, to them he's, sure. he's trauma center yeah so he is he is restoring these tapes and he starts to just uncover this this world that is like, you know, there is some supernatural cult, weird kind of stuff happening. And he's kind of watching it through these tapes as he's oh. um, as he's restoring them. So the, the premise is very cool. Um, there's a lot to spoil that I'm not going to spoil. Um, but it's it's definitely an interesting watch. It'll make you want to kind of keep watching it. Yeah. It's, 
it's good. It's not like, oh my God, this is Are the tapes amazing. being taped by that girl? Yes. Because I saw the trailer and it's just like this girl walking around with a video camera. Yeah, so it's the girl is taping and it kind of goes back and forth between like her recording and what's going on in her life and the tapes and then mm. him watching the tapes for yeah. the first time. What's it called? Something 81? Yeah, Archive, Archive. 81. Archive 81. Okay. It's pretty good. It's, it's only eight episodes, so that's kind of good. It's eight episodes and you can watch it. And nice. um, I'm not sure of the future of the show, but it's I think it's kind of worth watching it's interesting it's different yeah nobody i've ever heard of is in this show no i've Ida, never hobby and there's a guy named mamadou oh mamadou mamadou athy mamadou and daddy Doo. Mama- <laughs> daddy Doo's in that he's in the, the second daddy season maybe <laughs> mama daddy do daddy do grandma do grandpa do mimi do Daddy do, daddy do, mommy do. Poor mama do. Mama do and daddy do. It's a a man. It's a man. It's a man. man. Mama do. He should be daddy do. (laughs) (laughs) He should be the daddy do. His wife should be the mama do. Uh, oh my god so you can um, actually go listen to the actual podcast this is based on before yes, you see the show you can and, go and maybe archive 81 listen to the podcast if you like it and then you can go watch the show or if you're like i don't listen to podcasts you can try the show out <laughs> yeah. it's it's good it's worth a watch I, I it's not my favorite thing that's come out recently mm-hmm. but it's it's good i've heard some good things on yeah. stream last time i can't remember who was talking about it. maybe natalie's right maybe it was it joe been joe joe turned me on to it okay so. yeah, there was but, but i think joe mentioned it and then somebody, yeah, else, somebody else was like yes i'm watching that and oh, it's awesome yeah. cool yeah I, i've enjoyed it so far I'm also, are you guys just, are you guys doing the Wordle every day? I had to bring it up. The it's wor- like everywhere. No, I've what seen, is it? I've seen people like post about it. I'm like, what the heck is it's this? It's everywhere. The Wordle? Wordle? I think it's like a game. Yeah. I don't even w- know what it is. R- I just see people W-O-R-D-L-E, posting W-O-R-D-L-E, it. Wordle. I have not heard. This is the first time hearing about I saw, it. Okay, so it's, it's a UK website. Yeah, it's, okay. it's, you Facebook play it once a day, so it's like everywhere. I, I, it's everywhere on social media. Like Facebook, it's everywhere. But okay. he, a lot of people are playing it. So yeah. guess you the get, wordle in six tries. Each guess must be a valid five-letter word. Hit the enter button to submit. After each guess, the color of the tiles will change to show how close your guess was so it's it's to like the word. word. It's mastermind, but with words. Oh. Oh, so it's cool. so you get if the green if your letter shows up green, it's in the right spot and it's the right letter. If it shows up yellow, it's in the wrong spot but the right letter. Right. I see. So it's mastermind. Okay. Yeah. But but, but you, gray, you get, it's not in there at all. Yeah. So you just get six guesses to try to or, yeah six guesses to figure out this five letter word and then you just get it once a day how does shit like this get so popular i have no idea but it's everywhere it's like i have seen people and i was like what yeah the, it's I that goofy thing is. that people are posting where there's like a white square a yellow square a green square and yes two white squares. yes that's i've seen it. that wordle. that's wordle oh, oh. I see. Um, okay I've there is seen also on, yeah on which might be better for our game casters listeners something called loodle from the same creators loodle. l-e-w-d like oh, the word lood. Lood. oh yes L-E, here we go where a daily lewd word are, game Dick, titty, queef. Yep. <laughs> so wow. I've done those. Um, a few. So I'm going to tell you some of the words that were on there because you can't go. You can go back and play them, but it's like once a day, right? Yeah. yeah so yeah. the first time I played it, it was dildo, <laughs> and then it goes. It's not like as it can go up and down of being like you know dildo being pretty lewd, but then like the next day it was like farts. Awesome. I'm like, okay, that's, that, that's good. still lewd for yeah. sure. There's yeah. some British because this is a British game. Okay. There's some British words that oh, I had that no idea. So know. I learned a new. British, British term. Word? Let's for hear it. The female genitalia. Ooh. Do you know it? Is it bits? No. no. It's, it's, it's got to be five letters. It's got to be five um, letters. Remember. Yeah. Um, I'll, yeah, female I'm, genitalia. I can't, I can't think of it. I've about never it. heard of this word before. Okay. What is But maybe start? Jim can help us out. Crumb? It starts with an M. An M. Hmm. I don't, Magina. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all six letters. It's minge. No, I've not Minge. heard of that. M-I- that is disgusting. Like, look it up right now. I've look never... it up on Urban Dictionary. That's M-I-N-G-E. That sounds like a terrible word. <laughs> yeah. It is. It sounds like a vagina that's like old and dusty. I was yeah. like, like how old is this? Look at that, out. Minge. <laughs> You're going to eat it out. You're like, Ugh. a bunch of dust oh, yeah, flies in your face. Yeah, this is po- quite mingy. Oh, it's a minge. It's quite mingy. Your minge is, is quite potent. British <laughs> taboo minge. slang. The female genitals. Women yeah. collectively considered as sexual objects is another thing for minge. What? Oh, Why is it called a minge? Yeah. Here we go. Minge, noun, female pen, female pudin, pe- <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this word? Pudin, pudendum, female pudendum, 1903 of unknown origin, oh, okay. Watkins suggests it's from Robinie <laughs> Gypsy Mines Vagina, which is probably from Armenian Medjmiddle from pie root, pie I don't root, the root of, of a pie, <laughs> medio middle, minge. So the female hoo-ha is like a pie. It's from Romanian gypsy pie. It's a gypsy Ooh, pie. man, a gypsy pie. <laughs> the pie root. That seems like a terms of endearment. The hey there, gypsy pie, pie. Hey, gypsy pie. 
You want to get into my minge pie? <laughs> <laughs> gross. That's like the yeah, grossest so word to describe it. So you might get some, oh, some eat my different. Minge. One of the wordles actually uh, a, a week ago maybe was the word prick, yeah. which I know here yeah. we don't necessarily use. Like, yeah, we say prick your finger, right? Right. No, but prick is a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Prick is a cock. But I want to put me prick English in your minge. use prick a lot more, I think, maybe yeah. for the word prick. Oh, when suck you... my prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lick my minge. <laughs> lick <it. laughs> Weird. Only if you lick my minge. Dust me minge. <laughs> Dust. So Jim, Jim's going to have to back. He, he might have to back us up. Yeah, I want to hear about, about it. Yeah, I want to know what he I've that never heard like of it. A... Are we pronouncing it correctly? Is it minge or is it like mingy? Yeah. Mingy. Hey, mingy. Mingy tingy. <laughs> oh yucky! Nasty. So you, oh. if you're not playing Wordle, it's like it's play Loodle. You, you might start. be annoyed by everybody just playing it all the time, but it is. It takes like five minutes. You just kind of play it, and then you do yeah. just do it once. I just don't understand this, how this like, shit happens. How this shit becomes yeah. like so popular. Well, I think I get people it for the post it on social media, understand. and then everyone's like, "What is this?" And then yeah. they start playing it. But I'm like, "What, what is need. this?" And yeah, why don't people post about us? Yeah, on post about us. I'm like, I don't media. understand what they're posting. Stop hiding us. Because I think people also wouldn't understand what the hell we are. Like, yeah. We could be popular. <laughs> yeah. We could post be. us. We'll be the next Wordle. We'll we be could the... be Wordle. Man. Yeah. <laughs> to be yeah so playing Wordle and playing Loodle every day, it's funny to laugh Loodle. and That's right. funny. type in fun. Double click your minge it. while yeah. you play some Loodle. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, uh, you have something else you want to talk yeah, about? I just wanted to say a couple shows that we've been watching. I want to know. So, the new, the fourth season of. The Marvelous Mrs. Measle is coming oh out gosh, February so 18th. So, so we hot. started watching that from the beginning because it's been so You mean so her friend that played Miss Swan and Mad TV, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. They, it's so funny. There's a running joke. Have you have you watched Marvelous Mrs. Uh, Maisel? Season one, for sure. There's a running joke where they continuously call her a boy. Oh, okay. So there's, one, there's just one scene that it doesn't give anything away where they're in court. And Mrs. Maisel got arrested for just some like stupid misdemeanor, and she's like at, at court in front of the judge. And um, Miss Swan is Miss Swan. <laughs> what's her name? Um, um, Susie Myers. No, <laughs> Susie. What's her real name? Oh, Alex. Borstein? Alex Borstein. Okay, Borstein? or Borstein, right? Yeah. So she's the she's like the supporting actress in the show, and so she's like dr- she in the entire show she's dressed like kind of. As a uh, you know, like uh, yeah, like she has short hair. Clothes. She is like wears yeah. a hat. She wears a hat. Coat. She yeah. wears like yeah, right, yeah. tomboyish kind like of a vest. Kind of Especially for that era. Is but not, so she's yeah. like yeah. she's like there in like the, the the audience or whatever of the of the court, you know, and yeah. and so the judge is like bringing down the hammer on Mrs. Maisel and, and she stands up and she's like, hey, you can't talk to her this way. And the judge just goes, quiet, young man. <laughs> <laughs> like, sit down, young man. Yeah, That's funny. Just, like, I remember liking that it's show. Really, really oh, it's really, really Well, you see her great. boobs in the first yeah. episode yeah, and then never it's again. So it kind of yeah. blows. Yeah. The first oh. episode's great. Ryan loves it over the show. Again. It is so good. It's really good. So it's the fourth so season's coming out next month. So okay. we started watching it You're going again. through it again. And then I watched, I started watching um, the show on HBO called Euphoria. Okay, that and just had a new season come is, out too. Yeah, it's currently like coming That's the Zendaya out weekly. One? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. First, first of all, I really like Zendaya. Yeah, she's cool. Yeah, she is cool. I like her a lot. Um, but the show is insane. I was watching it. And, like, I don't know every. Okay, you said that about Shameless. Is it insane compared to Shameless, or is it like no, a different it's, kind it's of a insanity? Diff- it's more. It's more of like a Damn. shock Man, factor. Well. Insane. You know, like Shameless is like like. Yeah, it's yeah what is this crazy person there's, I'll just say doing this. to there's his There's a lot neighbor. of penises in there. Oh, oh okay. There's boobs, Guy too. Boobs. I don't know if I would describe okay, that as euphoria. You know the girl? <laughs> you know Some the, people might. You know that blonde girl <laughs> yes. from um, the White Lotus? The the f- young girl, she's blonde, and she had a friend come with her to Hawaii. Yeah. The friend is in you it? See, yeah, no, Sydney the blonde Sweeney? girl's in it, and she <clears throat> is, you see her boobs, too. Is it Sydney Sweeney? Huge. Is that her name? Sydney Sweeney, that yes. is her name. Um, but yeah, there's a lot, there's, it's basically about like high school kids and Zendaya's a, Sounds like they do drugs. a drug addict, yeah, but okay. there's a lot of sex. It's called Euphoria, oh, it sounds like that girl. There's just a lot of crazy shit that happens. She was in Handmaid's Tale, that girl. Yeah, that girl. Um, but I thought, I really like it. It's very entertaining. And then, um, I also started watching the latest and final season of Ozark too. That's what. We're, that's our next thing that we're going to yeah. start. Are they canceling it or is it just like it's done? We're ending it. I think it's it. just done. I think it's, I mean, there's two. This is season four. Yeah, because there's not part many. One, oh, right. And then there's season four, that's part right. two. They're breaking uh, it up into seven episodes and seven episodes. And then I think they're ending it. Yeah. But I think it's going to have a story arc and be done. Yeah. It's not like yeah, they're a, planning something it. that got canceled that's going to be forced out in Ozark. Right. In like, Ozark. what was that one show? Bloodline. Blood. Bloodline. 
Blood on the minge. Blood. Mingy blood. Oh. The one with blood minge. The one with um, <laughs> Coach Taylor that. in it. That one, I Friday know Nights. their yep, final Friday season, they, they found out like they were canceling it, and so they had to just quickly wrap it up in a few episodes. So and so the ending sucks. was terrible because they just kind of had to quickly like figure something out. Yeah, that's stupid. And that was like a bummer, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, all, I would recommend all three of those shows. Yeah, M- Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is on Amazon, Amazon. Prime, yeah, I yeah. think. Amazon Prime. And the other ones are on HBO? Is that right? Uh, or Euphoria Ozark is Ozark is Netflix. Ozark's and Euphoria Netflix. is it. HBO. Okay, cool. So if you <laughs> listened to the first Gamecasters adjacent episode that just released last Sunday, you would have heard my biggest surprise and game of the fest as the flippin' right game Demeter, published by Sorry We Are French. What else do we play by Sorry We Are French, Jeff? Is it Iki? Is oh, Iki. Iki, sorry, we are French. Yes, Iki is sorry, we are French. I thought there was another game that you reviewed. Maybe I'm wrong, but you're right. Iki is sorry, we are French for sure. There is another one for sure. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay, yeah, because I remember specifically it wasn't Iki They're that I thought that about. It. Yeah, like what is that about? Um, and um, so, um, <clears throat> okay, so this game really took me by surprise because I'm a fancy board game media creator and I've heard of every game that's ever been created and all should bow to my great knowledge and I have a festival that I started specifically to play all these games that I know and I'm the one ruler of board game knowledge. Well, it turns out my knowledge of board games is really just like mankind's understanding, not the wrestler, of the known universe. It's vast, but it's also only like 5% of the actual universe as a whole and so along comes Janelle, someone who exists outside of the known universe bringing all these little tiny games that I've never heard of for me to play and one of those games is the flip and write game called Demeter now in my defense I don't think this game is widely available in the United States you can still get a multilingual copy which I did that includes English pretty easily but it's not readily available on like cool stuff miniature market or Amazon oh, okay. yeah. um, so I bought it at the Philibert website that's P-H-I-L-I-B-E-R-T how did she know about it? She heard about it from some other uh, another podcast. Oh, okay. French. Yeah, French. from French. French. Yeah, she's podcast. French. <laughs> and it's really inexpensive, and the shipping is not that bad. So, getting back to it. Demeter is a flip and write game, and the theme is basically that you have gone out in search of Earth-like planets, and you have discovered one that has two moons, both capable of sustaining human life. The moon you're landing on, Demeter 1, has dinosaurs roaming around. So your job is to study and research the land to make sure it's safe for humans to occupy or something like that. Basically how the game works is there are five decks of cards that represent a different research area. Each deck is made up of 12 cards, and each round, the top card of each deck is revealed. So each round, we all have five different options that we must choose one of. Once all... um, Once we all make a decision, we take the action of the chosen uh, card. We could all take the same action if we want. It doesn't really matter. By writing and crossing things off on our player sheet, um, after we're all done, we flip the next card and choose another one. We do that 12 times until the game ends and then total up scores. So the actions are really cool. Each action has a color associated with it, and you can only take one action at most four times during the game. So you can't just pick the same action over and over and over again all game long. Um, also, each time you take an action, it gets a little stronger. So, for example, there are these little meeples to cross off throughout the uh, your player sheet. Those meeples are scientists, quote unquote. And the more meeples you cross off, the more stuff you get that either lets you get straight up points or <clears throat> lets you cross off other actions. And so there's a specific action to take to cross off meeples. And it's one of those five actions I talked about. So the first time you take it, you get to cross off one meeple. The second time you take it, you can cross off two all the way up to times four. Um, There are other ways to get meeples, but that's the main way. Okay. Other actions include building research stations that give you points for dinosaurs that you fill in throughout the game or advancing on this almost crossword puzzly thing to unlock endgame scoring goals. If you don't take that action enough to get up the tracks to unlock the endgame scoring, you just don't score for those. And that can be catastrophic for you. So this game is in essence a balancing act. You need to do most everything to do well, but you only have enough time to just barely do anything. So how are you going to use these 12 turns wisest? Um, There's an expansion that adds new ways to score and new scoring sheets, uh, one that basically is the same as the base game, but with just a couple minor tweaks that really help to alleviate any staleness you might otherwise encounter with the same sheet over and over. And then the other map is completely different with new mechanisms and everything. Um, It's very replayable with that endgame scoring I talked about. Each game, there are four endgame scoring tiles that are shuffled and then randomized each game from a pool of about, I don't know, 14 or so. So it really helps to make each game feel different as the actions you prioritize will not usually be the same from play to play unless you decide not to swap the scoring tiles out between plays. So things I liked. 
This game is awesome. It's a crunchier blank and write game that's not as heavy as something like Hadrian's Wall or Fleet the Dice game, but gives you more to chew on than something like Second Chance or Quix. The nature of a game that's only 12 turns long with lots of decisions is complexity and tightness that uh, this game, and, and this game is toit, okay? You can get screwed up very easily and kind of find it difficult to recover, uh, but the game's like, I don't know, what, 15, 20 minutes long? Tops? And so it's very easy to just immediately do it again. There are a ton of choices of how to fill out your sheet that even after five or six plays, I'm still finding new ways to play that I have not even attempted. Okay, the game is really hard. Um, I said this before, but it really feels like one of those games where you feel like you're behind the entire time. And then by the end of it, you're sometimes like, oh, I almost scored 60 points. Neat. My favorite thing about the game is definitely how quick it plays and how dense it feels while you're playing. Every turn matters, every choice matters, and then it's over and you just are like, I just needed one or two more turns to get all these things done, but you can't have it, and I love that. Things I didn't like. The game can feel punishing, almost to a frustrating degree. It can oftentimes feel impossible even. If you make a mistake early on and you look over at your opponents and they're just much further ahead somehow because of the combos that they're working and yours are just stupid and doing nothing, that can suck. And it can feel difficult to understand how you even got to this place in the first place. Um, it also feels a bit unintuitive to have this yellow action uh, be something that you can do at the beginning of the game, yet you literally cannot even take that action until you have a dinosaur fully colored in. So unless the yellow card also allows you to color in a dinosaur, it's just useless, which just feels a little strange. Other than that, though, I love this game. Overall, I think it's one of the best blank and rights in a very crowded space of blank and rights. And I think it's successful because of its complexity to playtime ratio. It works as a flip and right because it's lightning quick, but it still has those brain burning decisions every round. So it's a big thumbs up for me. Um, both Jeff and Natalie have played it as well, and I'd love to hear what they think. We're going clockwise, right? So, Natalie, can you tell us what you think about um, about Demeter? Demeter, okay. Um, I really like this game, but man, am I bad at it. <laughs> but I guess that's just a testament to how good the game is, because every time I played it, I just feel like I'm, I just suck. <laughs> My scores are low. I don't, you know, but like Ryan said, it's so... It's so tight. The decisions are so tough because you only have like 12 turns and doing something dumb can like totally screw everything up. Um, but I still find it really fun. It's really short. So that helps, you know, in that department. And like there's so much that you can do that you don't have time to do in those short 12 turns that my new goal is to like just try different stuff every time yeah, now and obviously like the cards that come up are always going to be different and the scoring um is always going to be different but it's still it's still like short enough quick enough fun enough to like be a game that i really want to keep playing over and over again even though it's really hard it's really hard well this is a game so natalie you typically in games like doing everything yeah this is a game where you can't do that and I so know. if you try you're probably going to fail. Right. You know, you almost have to like, there's a bunch of different dinosaur species. There's, how many are there? S eight? No. Is there that many? Uh, One, two, seven, three, eight. four, five, six. There's seven. Right, there's seven. seven. Okay. Including that little pterodactyl, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, you you cannot do them all. You just can't. You yeah. can't. You're, there's no way oh, you're going to no, get them all. There's no way. So you got to almost pick like two, maybe three to try to get them done. Yeah. You know, and if, so if you're trying to do everything, you're just not, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, all of a sudden there'll be two <laughs> turns left and you're like, ah. Same with the scoring have, goals. There's four scoring goals. A, B, C, D. You're only going to probably get two of them. Mm -hmm. If you do really amazing, you can maybe get three of them. And I don't know how you could potentially yeah. get four. Getting four would be just crazy. Or like I got three this last game, but I got three of them on the lowest number. Oh, did you? you yeah, I, got, I only got two of them. I only had two also. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this game. And I'm excited to try the expansions and see... You know, Me too. How those make it a little different because all we played is like the the base, the base intro game. Intro game, but I know there's a couple more expansions. Um, so yeah, yeah. One increases the the game length from twelve to fifteen rounds, and then oh, okay. adds adds a fifth yeah. action you can so do. Like you can now do each action five it. times. But I mean, one of my favorite parts about it is <laughs> that it is quick. Me too. And so, you know, even if you're like, oh, like we played it the other day and we played it, and I was like, oh man, I. I forgot this scoring part of it. And we're like, let's just play it again. And we're like, okay. And we didn't. It, it was, yeah, it was a good time. And we're, it's like barely been a half hour, 40 minutes. And we played it twice, yes. you know, and it feels 
every for me every play has felt like oh, shit oh i'm, yeah. I'm no but this is, is wrong i'm doing not, badly like, and then not, it kind of works out it's like simple but it's not easy and the decisions are very hard but it's mm. it's a challenge for sure but it's fun <laughs> what do you think jeff overall i liked it i again don't i don't like gravitate towards these love roll and rights right because i feel like i've played a million and they feel the same mm -hmm. um to an extent right there are the outliers in both directions of like you know quicks being almost nothing right yep. yeah and hadrian's wall being almost everything almost everything right <laughs> being, being like almost borderline like okay i need to stop like this engine needs to stop at some point as you're playing the game. oh man no i want the uh, engine to go forever going. yeah I would love but it to go i like forever. um i like the the five choices that you get for each uh each turn you feel like you're actually making a decision instead of okay the dice are rolled yes that's here's, a good point yeah you know here's a six because it is put random something. still you but you're right there's five different your, random yeah. things outcome. that you can yeah. then pick that's so a good that's actually a good it also then like with 12 turns leads everybody in a different direction almost immediately which I kind of liked. So everybody's board looks different. Um, in in more simpler games, everybody's board could look similar. Like mm -hmm. I know that, you know, in Second Chance or something, things start to look different. But essentially, you're filling up the same space, yeah, right? Just totally. with different shapes. So that that same goal. But we all have different goals as we're playing the game. Um, speaking of goals, I liked that you weren't going to get them all. That you mm -hmm. need to focus on a few of them mm -hmm. because again, that changes my decisions of what cards I'm going to pick. I'm not going for goal A. I don't need to worry about science or right. whatever, right? So I'm right. not going to I'm not going to focus on that. Or I'm going to pick all the science cards because that's going to give me points because yep. I'm going to try to score that goal. Mm -hmm. So that then leads us into different cards. So it's like the the variability and the path that you take I really liked. So do you like you I don't mean to stop you, but you like it more that <clears throat> there's opportunity like all of us are going to be probably doing very, very different things that appeals yeah. to you, that part of it appeals yeah, to you. Yeah, I like that. Um, that's cool. I like that for the weight that it is. Um, I think if it was like, you know, I know that in a game like Quicks, it's easy, you know, the decision of do I take a six or do I not take a six? Right. Yeah, that's different for everybody. But this has. Yeah, actual This has decisions. different. Yeah, yeah. That decision that you make can lead to then on a completely different path. Mm -hmm. Right. Then it's like thinking about the timelines, so like the Loki timelines, right? That one yeah. timeline can split yeah, the whole different thing. I take that, that one. Yeah, yeah. For sure. um, and I like that. Man, that and was it good didn't. Show. It didn't feel it was. It didn't feel. Um, I'll go back to Hadrian's Wall. Your love. It didn't feel <laughs> too cascading with these bonuses. It yeah. felt like right. you had a good turn, but it didn't take. It didn't take twenty minutes for you to finish your turn. Yeah. Which in Hadrian's Wall it can. Yeah, you can just go like, and go and you're go. You're like, oh, at some point I don't want this blue worker because I need the turn to be over. And it's like, okay, now I get this then, and now I'm doing this and this and this, and that feels cool while you're doing it. But you're also like. Okay, everyone's just staring at me. You know, <laughs> oh, you're the last one. You're I the last keep one going, or like, man, my neck hurts because I haven't looked up in 20 <laughs> minutes. This felt like okay, I can do three things, and now that's nice. Like, okay, now you know, I, I yeah. got a little engine. It was satisfying. Going. I like, yeah. yeah, so right. like 20 okay. minutes. So right? it was satisfying enough for you. So it's what I'm hearing from you is Hadrian's Wall went almost too far it, for you. It touched the line. Like, I don't know yeah. if it went too far. Any more it than was that? At the very top. <laughs> any more than that? I would be like, I don't want to keep doing this conversion right. resource over and over and over again, because then, you know, at least in Hadrian's wall, there were sections of the board that you didn't finish. Yep. If you had another turn in Hadrian's wall, or you got an extra resource or something was extra, you'd almost be able to finish the entire board. Mm -hmm. And that I wouldn't enjoy. Yeah. Agreed. Right. Um, agreed. So I think Hadrian's wall did it to a point at which this is the perfect stopping point of your cascading combos that you're going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you get a little bit of that in Demeter, which is cool. Yeah. And so you're, you get, it's yeah. almost here, here, like, here and here, here's a couple combos like. and then right. I can you stop and we move on. But I can play this in 20 minutes and you play Hadrian's wall in two hours. Yep. Right. right. For sure. So no, for yeah. sure. Um, I thought the cards were cool. I like that you don't use them all every game. I like that the cards also kind of cross over with each other. So mm -hmm. the red action of filling in some of these buildings um, or filling in some of these, whatever they are. Yeah, those um, research stations. You could find those on the yellow cards. Sure. Right. right? So there's kind so of that. And match. It's not like, oh, the purple cards are only going to be science things that come out. They right. kind of, I like yeah. that little, that also creates like mini combos. Oh, yeah. I get to cross off the red box, but I get to do a purple action. So right. I liked that. Um, there were these little bonus buildings that I was like, right away, I'm like, I'm going to get all the bonus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to get two of the bonus. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I like the idea of having the bonus buildings to go, oh, now I get to do something extra every turn. Mm -hmm. um, that's that like engine building. Those things like, are cool. Thing I, like. Right. I like those two. Um, I think it's probably, you guys have played it, what, three, four? That's four, our five fifth times? or sixth okay. time playing I it. I think, just, again, I've, now I've just yeah. played it once. I think that it's got 
does it have 10, 10 plays before you might want to add something? Yep. 10 to yeah. 10 to 15. Yep, maybe I think before so. You go, All right. Yeah. Now let's I've seen it. Do I need to do more. turns. Let's add another card. Let's add another goal. Something. Yeah. Um, which is good. For, and that's the expansion adds too. Mm-hmm. Which is good for that like that roll and write middle weight roll and write. Mm-hmm. Right? right. It's not the quicks where you're going to play it in five minutes. It's not Hadrian's Wall where you're you're you could get a bunch of plays out of it. I think 10 is a good number to be able to play this game and then want more. So yeah, yeah and and like there's it. more out there. And there's even a re-implementation called Van Van Yeah, Vanatu or something. Va- yeah, Minge, Minge, Minge. 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 Yeah, I've seen that. That's <laughs> that's flying around. It's supposedly um, the reason I didn't so I had the option to get Demeter or that Varuna. New one. Varuna. Varuna. Yeah, or, yeah, something that's, that sounds right. Varuna. Um I think it adds a little <laughs> bit even more complexity onto it and I was kind of like, man, I felt like Demeter was hard enough. I don't I don't need an extra layer sure. of of dimension to it. Yeah. I have Hadrian's Wall if I want to go heavier. Um, but that is out there available. I and might I, look you can at get that them both more, on yeah. Filibert. Filibert will Filibert. have them both. And it's really inexpensive. I was okay. surprised. So th- they're in euros. And the euro conversion to dollars is not that bad. It was like, you know, we'll say it was $25. The U.S. dollar doesn't suck as bad. It doesn't as it suck to. as bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite as bad. So, like, I just bought Boomerang from oh, cool. from that same website. And it was like $12 in euros. It was only like $14 or $15 in yeah. American. So it wasn't that much more. It was actually cheaper to buy Boomerang on Philibert's website in France than it was to buy on Colossal's website in the U.S. Because <laughs> Colossal marks the game up to $20. Oh, okay. And then you pay and shipping on top of that. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, it's like okay. I'm only paying $14. Maybe I'll for check out Varuna. Yeah, check out Varuna. I mean, that would be really cool if we cool. each had one yeah. a version of that yeah. and we could we could play them together. Cool. Yeah, I, I give it a thumbs up. It was it was cool. It was kind of what I wanted out of a out of a middle a middleweight roll and write. Yeah, right. Because right. it's a lightweight game, but it it's is. a middleweight. Right. But in for that genre. for that genre, yeah. it's it's middle to yeah, it's even middle to heavy. I feel like you yeah. know, mm-hmm. which there's not a ton of those. I feel like it's either you either have fleet the dice game Hadrian's Wall, which are like way up top, yeah. or you have quick second chance. I put this in you know, a even Rolling Realms is lighter. A popular game that it I felt similar. to This is probably Welcome to where I yeah, feel Welcome like to you is, have is more the choices you're making. You know, you have some combos occasionally. The scoring can is different every game. That's yeah. where I put this in the. In that weight class. That was actually a good observation that I hadn't considered was flipping the car, like having the choices versus feeling beholden to a flip, you know, because you have five. There's five flips. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't really feel like, well, I'm just I'm screwed. You have all these. You can you still get to feel like you're not. It doesn't feel as random. Yeah. As a, a, a typical roll. And roll. I think I, for that reason, I think I like flipping rights like this better. Yeah. I feel like if I don't have an option of five flips. Then I'm like, oh, I messed up. Yeah. Instead yeah, of just one. Right, like, exactly. Oh, damn, it's not the two square that I needed. Right. I have five of them, and I'm like, I can't do anything with five of them. That's on me. <laughs> yeah, that's my, my bad. Yeah, my right. bad. <laughs> I did something there. So that is Demeter by Sorry We Are French. Um, again, you you can't get it right now in the States readily. I I think it's coming to the States. It might, they might not bring Demeter. They might bring Vin, Vin, Min, Minji. Varuna. Yeah. We they don't might talk bring about Varuna. Varuna. No. <laughs> I don't know. That's I an think, Encanto joke. I wonder if Sorry We Are French is part of the Hachette. They have to be because Iki, part of the Iki was, was Hachette. Yeah. In the Hachette booth. And I know they're starting to creep into the, the big U.S. market. Yeah, so and maybe... they're, they're buying up, I think they're buying up companies. So I think okay. Sorry We Are French is probably has been acquired by Hachette is my guess. So that is Demeter. Uh, Jeff, what have you been playing? I've been playing games. Yeah. So obviously we had NerdFest. Yep. Again, go back and listen to that episode. Obviously. Who knows? Obviously. The first, the Gamecasters Jason episode. Yep. And you could hear all the games we played. But I got a second play in because the first play was a, that I had of Obsession was at NerdFest. Mm-hmm. Right. Really liked it. And then we played Obsession again. I played it with Devin. So we played awesome. a two-player Obsession. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to tell you the yeah, result. Yeah, because you played it four-player and two-player. Yeah, We've so only played player. it two. I played it four-player. Oh, you played yeah. it four-player. So I've only played it two-player. Yeah. I I really liked it. I liked it with two. It went – I was able to explain it, and Devin and I played it in like two hours. Yeah, it's, like, it's just not that over, long. Like, so it was a 30-minute explanation, hour and a half, maybe hour 45 to play it. Mm-hmm. And – I really liked it again the second time. Devin also said she really liked it. Cool. She was happy that she was kind of saying some game things, right? She was like, I think it'd be different every time because you have a bunch, bunch of different cards. Good. She's like, the goals are different. She's like, I think I would do different stuff. And I was yeah. like, that's great. Wow. Okay. So, and she wanted, it sounded like she wanted to do that. She wanted to play yeah, again. And I she got basically like kind of like the, I did, I did well this time in comparison to what I did the first time, knowing, you know, the cadence of the game yeah. and how stuff like that. We both, 
we both realized, and she said at first, she was like, I think I passed too late. I'm like, yeah, me too. We passed the same round, and it was like Now you 11, can't do anything we were like, oh, in we the lab. Yeah. We kind of messed up. That happened up. to me too. And she's like, I too. think I should have passed earlier. And I was like, that's a good <clears throat> recognition of the yeah. game, right, yeah. to, to know that. So we – I both really enjoy, and this was the first time also in this game where I, I utilized some of those those expansion workers for what they were. Yeah. yeah, and she did the same thing I did in the first game where she was like, "Did you not I don't play with those that. in your first?" We game? did. Oh, I just okay. didn't touch them. I got gotcha. you because yeah, yeah. I didn't understand any yeah, of that. Sure. Sure. I was like, so it can stand in for the who, what's, and again, mm-hmm. the language yeah. in this game is trying to be thematic <laughs> and doesn't like. I just wanted to say this worker can be a red one, hundred percent. Right. Not I agree with that, hundred percent. Household right. made, and I'm like, well, is that? And then I got to flip over right. six aid yeah, cards to like, try to figure okay, out what's Okay, so what. then which one's that? Okay, so, so I do the blue understand can be the some red. people <laughs> yeah. love getting yes. themselves ensconced in yeah. that theme. Yeah. I think the three of us. I don't know if we're outliers. We might not be. We are definitely a different group where we're just like, I just want to play the game and be excited about yeah. the game. The mm-hmm. theme is not super. Right. It's cool that they're servants, but I'm cool if you calling it red servant, blue yeah, servant, right? Yeah, yeah, red worker. Yeah, so hundred percent. They're. So that I kind of left out of when I played the first time, and I was like, I'm just going to do kind of the base stuff. And then Devin did exactly what I did, almost had the exact same score as I did the first game. <laughs> I tried to utilize some of those other ones where you can, like, place it on a card to get an extra 100 bucks yes. or yeah. to draw an extra card to screen those guests or whatever, use the cook. Devin did use the cook, so that was the one um, extra worker. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you right now that I was texting you guys in a rant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. I also he was the mad Amanda. board game. I also talked <laughs> yeah. to Amanda about it. She had it for I, me too. <laughs> I want it. I want to start by by saying I get it. I get that this company is one man. I understand that it's that it's one guy with the help, probably free help of his friends or his family to do this. But someone needs to come out with an official rule book for everything in that game. Yeah, like once and yeah. for all, one rule book that says, "Okay, to rule this them is all. It, a rule book to rule them all." Yeah. Because when I go through and I read, you know, edition two of the rule book. And then I go and I pick up an expansion that and I read the core that one rules. Yeah. that talks about edition one, but changes the core rules of edition one. But did yeah. edition two already change that core rule? Maybe. And then here's six more player aid cards that you can use. Those are the worst. So am I using this flow chart when I'm passing? Because the upstairs downstairs flow chart lets you buy a worker. Mm-hmm. But, the what, second we edition, we but the we second edition way. tells you not to. Yep. But the second mm-hmm. edition is newer than the upstairs downstairs. But the upstairs downstairs doesn't say to replace that one. Right. Yeah. And so there's just a lot of like little thing, and then there's six cards in there that replace, you know, if your tile has a zero on the back, flip yes. that or don't use this one. And then it's like if the mon- if you feel like using this game to have less points, use these monuments. And all of that came together in a fucking mess. Yeah, that was my biggest problem it's a as well mess. with those those cards. So which one do you use? What the hell? And and I've also I've talked to a couple people who are like, well, you just kind of you just kind of play, and it's like that's not what I do. I <laughs> yeah. want to play the game how it was intended to be played, not like. Here's here's the three house rules that we Just found have fixed you or feel. worked these things. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. don't do that. I want to play how the game was intended. I'm with you. And then sort of I feel you know, the same once way. I feel comfortable with a game, maybe switch something. Does yeah, the, I feel the same does way. Does the game come with all the expansions like everywhere? No, no, no. So you no. had to buy everything. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can buy them yeah. separate. So, I was going to say, if you, do you recommend if you have them all to just play with everything? I so do. you don't have to keep like changing like, well, if, let's play this time with this and it'll be like this. I now. feel like, like you should just, just turn it, it all on. We, turn, we turned think, everything that'll on. That'll be the way and you I play. like it that way. So you better be ready to do some rules. You better be ready to figure out rules. So if you know nothing about this game and you throw it all in, you better be ready to read Three entire rule books. The the rule book, the the glossary even has rules in it that it tells you to go refer to. And then the upstairs, downstairs rule book. Wow. And the little sheets of paper that come with all the bonus tiles. You better be ready to read all that. I feel lucky I didn't. If have you to don't know anything game. about it, you can just yeah. you can ju- I think you could start if you like this game, you could probably start or, or want to play it. You play the base game and then the second play, throw everything in. And then never look back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, what I that's I mean, what I might it was suggest. A, it but. was definitely a lot at the beginning, but I feel like it's intuitive enough of a game. Once you know yeah. that, it's you're not going to be super confused going yeah. back. Like a game I like on Mars, that. you don't play it for six months. You have to learn it from scratch. Yes, this yeah, game I, you're going to have to be like, how did that work again? Oh yeah, and then you just well, check I it just out. like because I told I taught Devin in probably twenty minutes. And, yeah, it's very simple. And teach. I'll never have to look back at it. But I think if you just went in blind, I was lucky that Amanda yeah. had taught it me the week, talking to me the week before because yeah, I, like, I had an idea, idea of like, how, yeah, okay. she taught it to me like, too. What did this? And she even said she's played the game twenty times. She's like, I'm not really hundred percent sure how the useful man works. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like you put him over on a card, but then he goes into your expend. It's just a weird. 
sort of thing to try to find. And then if there, you have a question about a tile, good luck trying to fucking figure it out. It's definitely different because of the fact that it's not like some mass market big yes. company game. And so you yeah, you have to know that guy. going into Obsession that, okay, like Jeff said a minute ago, this is like this one guy's labor of love. He does the artwork. He does the rule book. He does the, yeah. He's the designer. He does it all. He produced the damn thing himself. Right. It's an amazing And it's game. really good. It's, a, it's an amazing oh, it's good. piece of it's work. It's just rough around the edges. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I, Board Game Geek has some nice... You know, there. I just saw one that I'm going to print. It has all the people, what they do, who they can replace, mm. and like in nice columns that I can print like that out easy. and I can throw away six extra cards, right? <laughs> yeah. So I don't have to use that. I would. I uh, wish there was something. If that replaces the flowchart cards and all the cards, that's what I want. I yes. want one player aid. I don't, don't want five cards in front of yeah, me that you got to flip one, over yeah. and like. What is the? Yeah, I would rather have a gigantic player aid like, um, like in Tuantin Suyu. Like in Tuantin Suyu, uh-huh. or what was the other? What was yeah, one yeah we played? just played Bitoku. Bitoku. Oh, Those yeah. two player aids are amazing. Give me I that. I don't want cards. I have to flip. I would back rather and forth. flip a page yep. than look. Well, because it wasn't even just flipping the cards back and forth. I was honestly not sure, and it turned out we were wrong. I wasn't sure that we were using the right ones. But are you sure you're wrong? Are no, you confident that you're wrong. I don't think I don't. I'm not 100 sure not you're wrong. Sure. I only think I'm wrong because Amanda was like, no, no, no. The the way you're supposed to play takes out that servant. But that's thing. So, like Amanda probably knows because I know she's talked with Dan, the designer. Right. But that's not made clear anywhere. What, I agree. Chart, I totally right. agreed oh, yeah. with you. So, I assume so we were playing it, it the right way. <laughs> yeah. That being said, I'm also redoing my pub meeple. Oh right, right now. Yes, you're this in the game of that. has a very good chance of of being very yeah. Very isn't high. it good? Um, Luckily, I'm happy. Like, oh, that, so are you saying you liked it? Better. I don't mean to interrupt you, Natalie. Are you saying you liked it better with two or on your second play? I li- I think I liked it better on my second play. Understanding the workers and being able to sort of make kind of better combos and better card decisions. Yeah. Uh, my second play, so I liked that. I also liked it how quick it played with Devin and I. Okay. Mm-hmm. That we can play this on a normal night. It's not an on Mars or an underwater cities yeah. where it's got to be the, you know, we're going to stay up a little longer. Yeah. We can play this game in an hour and a half. For sure. And that's yeah. that's what I really like. And also, I think get an experience out of it. I know Dan, uh, Dan and Kim were saying, and Dan was telling me that they like read all the cards and like these. these oh, I did too. And these I did too. Yeah. It was think, so fun to do. Yeah, that. you can embrace yeah. it. I when we sat down, I was like, Devin, do you want to watch like Downton Abbey or something? And she's like, No, nah. so we watch Thirty Rock. But <laughs> you could do something like that, yeah. right? You could you could spice this every game time. Up or, yeah, like, the drink a mint or something. Yeah. Right? You could do something, and I think that that could enhance the game even more if you if you liked that. Dress yeah. up. Married off to big penis, James. I would watch if Ben and M. I think Ben and M. Need to buy this game. I don't know if they have it. They need to buy it and they need to do like a dress up thing with it. Like hundred oh, yeah. percent. They would be so perfect. Yeah, that, this would be. This was right up there. Her alley yeah. in that way. And, for and sure. it, the game is good. I think they would like it. Yeah, it's so, good. I'm glad that this one lived up to the hype because we hyped it up a lot. You did. This one and Batoku have a good shot of of changing around a top ten here. And is this the people. one that we talked about it? You wanted it, Devin bought it for you. Yeah, yeah. Devin that's what happened right after the show. She listened to it and she said, "Oh, I think I might like something like this." And then bought it for me for my birthday. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. a good yes. feeling for me because I'm a selfish yeah. motherfucker who just wants you to like what I like. Wait, yeah. you're saying Devin listens to the show? Yeah, she does listen Hi, at Devin. gunpoint. <laughs> She's always like, Ryan's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Does she still say it? Yeah. She's probably like, why Devin. do you say Natalie's funny when really Ryan's so funny? <laughs> and just like, well, I want the minge, so I yeah. got to have her let the minge say that. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, Ryan's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let me at that minge. <laughs> um, another thing, so I'm just going to keep talking about random games we've been playing, but uh, Devin and I finished the initiative finally. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So you said that. That's right. 14 plays, we finished. And? So it was fine. I'm glad, was fine. I'm glad we finished it. Okay. It, good there review. wasn't... I okay. wish that I would have played it with, like, I think I would have fun with a child. A group? Oh, oh, like oh really? A, like a t- 10, 12 year yeah, old. Might have sure. gotten a lot out of it. The, the, sometimes you, the puzzles got difficult. Like, we were like, okay, we, we got challenged a little bit. We figured it out. We took a yeah. hand one. Like, and that's fine. But there wasn't the, the payoffs that I wanted throughout Darn. a 14 set campaign. So it starts, I'm not going to spoil a lot. You start, you, you get one early, which we talked about yeah. on our show. You get one early, you get a big one at the end, which is really cool. And then there's there's like two at the end, and I, I wish one of them was more in the middle to kind of change the game up a little bit. But it just felt like between plays four and ten, you didn't get any big thing. Yeah. The, sto- the story is fine. It's fun enough to kind of get through that. But I wanted something to like open or change in like the game or like, do wow. something. Yeah. And you just didn't get that for like a big chunk of it. Um, <clears throat> but I still like – I liked the puzzly aspect. I liked – you know, it's honestly, the last different... one, the last one, Devin and I were just like, let's just not play. Let's just assume we won. <laughs> because we didn't want to play the board game. We just wanted it to be done. Yeah. We just yeah. didn't want to do yeah. that. So we just skipped it and, and did the puzzle, which was, again, cool. But yeah, um, I'm glad I played it. I'm going to, like, assemble it back together and probably give it to Joe or someone. If somebody 14 out there is, plays, huh? Yeah. 
I would be interested in you doing your um your uh shit what that what's that thing called where the h index uh, yeah the h index I, I, I wonder what your h index is now i, I just did mine my, uh, i just checked it again because yeah. bill bill has this bill just list. passed one he's yeah up to 33 he's at now. 33 yeah and i was like oh my god i'm at 27 okay so i would really be interested to know what you are in now you've been playing I games know. at a clip the hard part well, is that I haven't logged clip plays. Over the last year or two. So this is my fourth year oh, logging Oh, right. That's so I'm never really behind. Right. You're right. I forgot uh, about that. It would take me. That's true. I've done like just I've been logging plays jotting forever. things down of like what would I have. I think I'd probably creep to 20 would, mm-hmm. be my, would be my guess. Yeah. Because I think about games like King of Tokyo that I've played 40 times yep. that I probably have three logged plays of in the last yeah, few years. Yeah, right? for sure. Um, or even games like Quicks, I don't have a ton of logged plays of that, but I played that a, a lot, ton, right? Yeah. So it would be hard. I could probably get a rough estimate. It's got to be like high teens okay. into the like early 20s. Yeah, <laughs> the early 20s. Early 19, the twos, 20s. you're in the twos yeah. now? <laughs> I'm in the twos, <laughs> But yeah, I, that's the number that I wish, that's the number that I miss the most from not having my logged plays is that H yeah. in there. Because sure. Bill talks about it and I want to, I want it. Yeah, I want to have one. Anyway, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, because yeah. I've been logging my plays. F- yeah, since I've the very it. beginning. Of, At the beginning, of I was just like, "Why would I want to log them?" And now I'm like, "Damn, I didn't log it." I know. <laughs> Natalie has speaking of that. Natalie has been killing it. Did you log this logging right her now? plays? I, no, I don't. <laughs> but you will. But I, been, yeah, good. I've been logging my so plays all month. year. So we talked about it last night. Eleven more times. We talked about it last night. You got it. So on Monday, it was my pick at game night. Okay. And I had a couple choices. I was thinking about trying to finish up my city, and then I was like, I'm getting my ass kicked in that. Let's play something else. <laughs> and I picked a game with a big old name. A okay. big old name. All right. Big name game. Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Oh, hell yeah. And I can't wait to hear like, about this. Not like big as in like a huge long name. Yeah. But big name in games. This has a big name to live up to. Yeah. If you come out with Terraforming Mars on something, you better bring it. Wait, Wait is so this not Jacob Frixilius? It is. Oh, okay. Is this okay, like okay. a separate game? Yeah. It's a separate game. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, right, because yeah. it's not there, like an expansion. Yeah, there was kind of, I don't want to say confusion. Confusion with me about like, okay, this thing came out. Is this just another expansion because there's 30 of them? I think that's what everybody I thought. have a couple, but no, this is a standalone game. You play oh, wow. it by itself, whatever. A lot of hype, a lot of skepticism when the game was kind of announced because it has the name on it. Yeah, yeah. how are you going to live up to that? How are you going to do it? So I think I took kind of the skeptical side when it started of... Mm-hmm. Of kind of like, I don't want well, this. I have the regular one. Why would yeah. I want Baby's First Terraforming yeah. Mars, right? Why would yeah. I want, I don't want to play Castle's Burgundy the Dice game. Yeah, it seems like game. just a mingier um, version. Yeah, yeah, and those, uh, mingy. It's just like right <laughs> in the minge. minge. Yeah, and I know the <laughs> oh Kickstarter. <my> yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, why oh, why <laughs> you have to whisper it? Natalie, like our show is Natalie G-rated or something. Natalie over to the side with one hand that I want. She's like, you mean like a pussier version? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we yep. mean, Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> Leans over Leans to the over. Hey, hey, guess like what? Jeff can't you mean like, yeah, like I can't see it. Yeah, like right. Yeah, like, yeah, Jeff can't see this Jeff. word. <laughs> it's not old enough. Doesn't know this word. <laughs> Earmuffs, <Yeah>. Jeff. <laughs> la 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 la. Oh my god. So I do know that. So this was on a Kickstarter to start with, <laughs> and I, I kind of read some a little bit. I didn't know that that it took a little bit of some flack, some hits because a Target had a collector's edition release also that I think. On the Kickstarter, they were promised, like, this isn't going to be Only a big for mo- you. Only for you. And then Target <laughs> grabbed it. And, you know, you can't turn down Target money. Right. So they did it. And I think it pissed people off. So, of course, they went in and raided If they didn't once. tell people, I could understand the butthurt ba- being a backer. Yes, I agree. If they're like, hey, listen, we're trying to, you know, we're a small company trying to get as yeah. much business as we can. We're going to release this also at Target. You okay with that? Cool. Yeah, and they would mail back and you're like, you're stronghold game. You have money. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know the, the, ca- the communication. But I know some people, there's some ones on Board Game Geek for that reason of, like, I could have just bought this at Target kind of thing. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you didn't fund it, you might not have had the game So the ever, collector's edition's right? at Target, eh? Yeah, the collector's we'll be right edition. back. We'll be right back. <laughs> I found the collector's edition at my FLGS at RAW. They had oh, the collector's edition. Okay. So what the collector's edition adds is a necessary edition, which is the dual layered player board. So if you played regular Terraforming Mars, the player board for this one, Aries Edition, is if you have an option. The same. If you have an option to get a dual layered player board, dual always anything. do it. Yeah, always do it. Yeah. Every time. Dual layered player boards are the great Yes, Natalie. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm air. a little bit lost. So the, <laughs> the collector's edition is the regular Terraforming Mars, or is that still really? No, no, this is Ares yeah. So this thing. is Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition Collector's Edition. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not Terraforming Mars base game in any way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's totally. So you're like talking separate. about Ares Expedition. This specific Ares Expedition and a Collector's Edition of that. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. And that one comes with the dual layered boards. Maybe some like a card. And that's the one you should Target only or always or ever get the dual layered boards. Yeah. <laughs> Have you said that before? Yes. <laughs> always. Can you imagine Project L without the dual layered? 
it would tiles. Just be like, wouldn't it just not oh, be fun? Just move it would just yeah. It, it, was like, it just wouldn't feel. It wouldn't be as good of a game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. It is exactly. All it is, you're just, the whole game. Yeah. The game, the game is, is worse. The game now. is bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> so I it started to pique my attention recently because I kept seeing positive things about it. Stuff on Instagram, positive reviews. I'm like, okay. I got it for Christmas. I picked it out as my Christmas gift that Joe bought for me or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. You all went to the <laughs> store and bought so, each other a gift. Let me tell you a little bit about how it works um, in comparison to Terraforming Mars, and then we'll talk about how it separates. So okay. each player gets a starting board, Was which is now dual separate? layered and sweet. <laughs> Hell um, yeah. You should, if you can buy dual ass, layer player words, you should, you should do it. <laughs> oh it makes the game way better. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so game the dual layer board, you get, yeah. <laughs> You get a corporation card, which is the same as the okay. that, that, that's Mars. like your who you are, right? It says like your power. You're yeah. the you're the James Corporation, and you get fifty bucks, and you get a card or whatever, right? Cool. Yeah. So you okay. get the starting stuff, and then you get some project cards. The project cards are the same cards that you're playing over and over again in Terraforming Mars. Um, in Ares Expedition, this is where it's kind of new. You get a you get five different cards that match the possible phases in each round. So you have a set of cards. So Ryan would be green because the nor- colors are normal and you'd have to be green. Yep. Natalie would get red or works. blue. You got it. And um, I would get yellow. You would have a set of those five different phases in your color. So you kind of have two hands that you, you are working with. You're working with the phase cards and you're working with the project cards. Okay. So the round begins by you secretly selecting one of the phases that you would like everyone to do that round. Oh. Think of... Race for the Race galaxy, for the galaxy. Roll for the galaxy, the Puerto Rico, all th- that kind of. I I'm play, you follow. This. Yep, yeah. I'm going to pick this. Everyone's going to be able to do it. Whatever you pick, you get a little bonus. So if I pick phase one, I get a bonus in phase one because I picked it. Does that hurt me if I also pick phase one? No, nope, you okay. also get a bonus too. Okay. But then if you pick p- phase two and Natalie picks phase four, we would we would do phase one, two, and four. So not every phase is going to happen every, every round. Oh. You could actually just do one phase if we all pick two. Yeah, we just do two. All we We'd do. all get yeah. the bonus, and we would just. Uh, to do the second phase. And nobody follows. We just all get the good the good action if we all play the same card. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's basically so the, the the different phases let you like build the project card. So that's how you're building the project card. So phase 1 lets you build green ones, phase 2 lets you build red or blue ones. Okay. Okay. So if no one picks phase 1, you can't play a green card from your hand that round. Okay. So what yeah. the bonus would be is now you could play a green card for 3 less. That's the money that you're spending. So that's the bonus, right? Okay. The yeah. red or blue one, you could play two cards instead of one. So those are kind of the bonuses sure. that you get. Uh, the other the other phases are you activate the blue cards. So the blue cards are action cards. So that would be phase three would activate the actions. Phase four is produce, which then you look at your board and you run your production, right? Instead of um, in Terraforming Mars, you go back and forth, back and forth until you pass. And then the round changes and then you kind of produce. This will happen during that phase. So if you don't pick produce, you're not getting any new stuff. Got it. Um, the only thing about production that changes is your, if you remember the 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 brown, which is like, I don't know what it is, coal. I don't know. Yeah, Some sure. Metal. I think it's metal and like titanium. <laughs> Those two things don't actually produce anything. They just give you a discount on your cards. Oh, okay. So you're not keeping track of that production, but you're keeping track of money and heat and plants, just right. like in Terraform like Mars. Mars. So okay. you produce those, and the, the player boards are nice and separate. You have like what you produce on the left and how much you actually have on the right, and you separate those, so that's really great. Um, the project cards that you're putting out are very similar to the original, and that's the engine that you're building, right? Um, again, with green cards kind of helping productions, blue one usually give you some cool action, and then the red ones has like this one super action usually, like the lightning bolt action that lets you yep. like, mm-hmm. you know, flip tiles or take more cards or something like big in the moment. And play just keeps going like that. So I pick, we pick phases and we do all the phases and then we do it again, right? And then you look at your hand, and you pick a new phase. You just can't pick the same phase back to back. You pick a new phase, you put it out, and then we just keep going and going and going until the same three parameters are met, just like in Terraforming Mars. The water tiles are all flipped over. So instead of adding them to the board, you just flip them over. Um, and then the oxygen and the temperature are moved all the way up to the top. Okay. As soon as that happens, the game ends, and you count up points. Points are found you know, throughout the game as you move up that <laughs> TM, your, your terraforming rating or TR track. So right? it is very similar. It's very similar. Um, just the mechanisms that you're utilizing are different. Yeah, it, it's – yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell yeah, you. Yeah, sure. So um, I think that this exceeded my expectations. So I went in going – I didn't know which way this game was going to go. Was it going to be Baby's First Terraforming Mars and I'm never going to want to play it? Or is it going to be too much like the original game where I'm never going to want to play it? Mm-hmm. Right? Like where is that going to be on the scale? And I really think that it found itself right in the middle. Like you might just play it again. I <laughs> – I might be reaching for this more Before. often because oh, yeah. quick it's faster. Yeah. And it's not a lot faster. I almost wish it was 
uh, more plays will obviously speed it up. But it took us an hour and a half. Okay. Mm. A four player Terraforming Mars game would probably take two and a half to maybe three, depending on if you have new yep. players. Yeah. So we were new. It took an hour and a half, That's hour and 45. So I'm sure that play would get down. Um, the art, the graphic design, the production is so much better than the original. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the. The iconography still takes a minute to get used to. Dave was the only one that hadn't played Terraforming Mars at the table with the four of us. Okay. And he was like, what the fuck is this planet? What does this mean? What is, the, like, what's the plant versus the, like, how do I know am I going to get a plant or a production plant? And all those questions are great. If you played Terraforming Mars, it just is like, you know, right. kind of, well, it has that background. So you move up the production, yep. not, you don't get the plant. And so that's a little clunky, I think. But he even said after he played it, he's like, I, I liked it. Like, he did well. And he's like, I really liked it. Oh, so. Cool. That's an upgrade. I think the card art is just better. The card stock is better than the original. The dual layer player boards are definitely better than that original Bible paper. If you can get dual layer player boards, yeah, do, you so. always should do it. Yeah, we should put a I tag think. on. We should get a shirt. <laughs> yeah. It says dual layer player boards approved by the game. I love casters. dual layer player boards. I liked um, the race and roll for the galaxy type of action selection, I think worked really well. It forced you to think about what other players might do in a game that's very solitaire because that's one of my downsides. This game is very. Alone. You're in your own. You're just space. playing because everything ha- happens simultaneously. If I play the phase one, and sounds we're all, great to me. We're I like, all that's doing a plus for yeah, me. We're all doing phase one together, right? And it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it yeah. is. You are doing this. You by need yourself. to be aware of that. Yeah. So if I play phase one, we're all going to do phase one together. Mm-hmm. There is no like, all right, Natalie t- goes and takes phase one, and then I take phase simultaneously one. happens. We're simultaneously that's great. playing yeah. each. I phase. love that. So that's I might a- just play a card and kind of wait, or I I could even if I just play a card and then I move on to produce. My produce action isn't messing with anybody else. So I'll you can just, just kind keep of doing do that. it and then yeah. I'll wait. Just kind of do it. So like that's kind of quicker. cool. Yeah, it's I much like quicker. that a lot. So the action selection makes you at least think about somebody else. So if I look at Natalie's board and she doesn't have anything, maybe I want to, well, maybe Natalie will produce this round. So if she's going to produce, maybe I'll pick something else because I really want to get a card out and I want to produce. Mm. So do I pick the one <laughs> phase so then Natalie picks produce and then we all produce? Mm. Or do I pick produce because I get a bonus? So we had some some times where... Even just with four of us, we were doing two phases. Or it was like, I picked one. Joe was like, I picked one. Bill was like, I picked one. Dave was like, pick two. It was like, that was it. And then at some point, I didn't have the money to do, because they go in order, so you don't produce. Until. You produce last, yeah, so you might not have the no money to do that, something. Right. Or I didn't think someone was going to pick one, and now I don't have a green card that I can afford. So I kind of like that that sort of balance. Everybody kind yeah. of had a moment where you're like, well, I can't do a phase. Seems a little stressful in a good way. Yeah. That kind of mm-hmm. tenseness, like, oh, God, I can do this. It's going to be great. But yeah. Jeff or Natalie has like, to do that yeah, action like, so I it. can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the, in, in terms of like things that are, are maybe on the downside, it's not for me downside, but a downside possibly. The randomness in cards. You're just drawing cards. Yep. Um, it's a big 200 and plus cards stack of things. And you just draw cards. I did listen to the snob. So Gabby, I know you're listening. I think this is a an interesting way that they play it. They've they've played this game and they liked it better than Terraform Mars. They separated the decks into green, red, and blue. So when you're drawing a card, you can choose I want a green card, I want a red oh, card. Okay. This is a house card. rule? This is what yeah. I don't know if it's <laughs> some variant somewhere, but whatever. So they want a little more decision in how I'm going to pick a card. Like this is I don't need any more green cards. I need those big action red cards or at the end of the game. Let me pick that. Like I don't want to waste my draw card action and pick up something that gives me I literally don't need right that I don't need yeah. that, that feels so bad that's yeah. inter- that's an interesting version I, I who knows if I'll try it but I I like the idea that that might I wonder if that's in like a variant experience. section in board game geek yeah. yeah um again the game feeling a little solitaire but if that's that doesn't have to necessarily be a complaint yeah um like Natalie said the simultaneous play makes it so much faster which is good yep. but also doesn't give you how I don't know how much you remember terraforming Mars but on your turn in Terraform Mars, you can do one or two actions. Yeah. It does rem- – the simultaneous play removes a little bit of a, a cool surprise turn to someone else. For you maybe taking um, – which also isn't in Ares Expedition. The, they have, like, goals. If you remember, they're, like, major yes. awards. It's yep. a major award. Yep. That are put on um, the board. <laughs> they're on the board. <laughs> yeah, on So the board. you can maybe surprise your opponent by taking that. Those are all gone. <laughs> you won that? Um, yeah. It's a major award. <laughs> it's a major award. <laughs> Um, Could be a bowling yeah. alley. <laughs> <laughs> so with that gone, you don't have that player interaction. You're not competing for spaces on the board where, you know, my my little city building is there and now I want to surround it by other things or like, oh, I don't want to put it there because then I surround Devin's give her mm-hmm. a point. So that is completely removed. So there's like not as much interaction, but I like that it picks up the pace. So you remove the one to two turns you take and it could be a surprise or a fun action like a little combo. Um but you add in a much a much quicker play. I think I'll 
I think I'm going to keep both of these games. I think that by the time I get sick of both of these games, I think I might have more plays of Ares Expedition than of the regular. Okay. Because with an hour and a half, Devin and I can play this game on, again, a regular night and get the feeling of Terraforming Mars. And it, it will go quicker than that with just you and Devin, yeah? Maybe. The hard part is is they don't adjust. Since it's simultaneous, simultaneous, I guess. Th- yeah. They don't adjust any of the end game markers for two players or four. So Devin and I are still working on getting the temperature up 15 steps and the other thing up 50 steps. And it's just the two of us instead of the four of us. Oh, so that might so even take longer. So I'm not quite longer, sure how it will work. Um, and we're also, at, with four people, there was a possibility of us having four phases get flipped over. With Devin and I were just two. So, But the rounds will be faster. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But I, I'll definitely give it a try. But overall, this gave this gave me the Terraforming Mars feeling that I wanted. Uh, in cool. a much shorter play, the setup is so minimal. Because Terraforming Mars has some setup. Especially mm-hmm. if you throw an expansion in there and you have you know, make a decision before the game. And there's a lot of little moving pieces in that. This sets up quick. Everybody just gets their pieces and their board. You shuffle the cards up and it's pretty much ready to go. So it gave me enough of that feeling that I was like, okay, I, I like this. I like the engine building cards. I like Terraforming Mars. This gives me that scratch that itch or itch, itch is that scratch. Itch is the itch scratch. and scratchy show. How much the, does it cost? Yeah. It, so the collector's edition, I think, is either 45 or 50 and then it's 10 bucks cheaper for the regular. Mm. Again, okay. but the target sells both. Dual, I think? don't know. If you can get dual air player boards, though, I, okay. So I would say I if worth. you can get dual air player boards, <laughs> always, always do that get them. every time, no matter the cost. So that is uh, Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Yeah. I am very excited to play that game. Yeah, I, it, I think that you would play it, and because I know Terraforming Mars doesn't hit your table very often, right. you might be like, I think I might just want to. Yeah, play this, this might yeah. be the one I like. The better. annoying part I've only played it once. is if you've played this and you're like, man, this is just this is even if it's equal or slightly less than Terraforming Mars, you might always want to grab this because Terraforming Mars is is a beast to set up. People have sunk a lot of money into the original with like 3D yeah. tiles and Well, what you're describing to me is what it sounds like my thoughts were on Key Flower versus Key Flow. Yeah. yeah. Key Flow is like Key Flower is one of the greats. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Terraforming Mars is one of the greats. Mm-hmm. Ares Expedition might not be one of the greats, but it's like enough like the great, and it plays yeah. quicker, and that's how Keyflow was. Keyflow just plays so much faster, um, and it's not Key Flower, but it's basically Key. Yeah, it, so, so it sounds similar to that, and if that's yeah. the thing, that's what happened to me. I I ended up moving Key Flower, knowing you had it, mm-hmm. and kept Key Flow in my collection. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna, interesting. I'll keep you updated on how much both of those get played because I would I'd like really to know like Devin's De- thoughts. Devin too. really likes Terraforming Mars, so I would like her to play this, and because she might just be like, I don't want to play this, or she might be in the boat of. I don't want to play this lighter version. If I'm going to play a game, give me Terraform yeah. Mars. I'd like right? to hear like someone like Mel's thoughts or uh, Who, Joe like, and Jen because really they don't they play yeah. Terraform Mars, Mars like, like every well, hour. Joe Joe every liked hour. it. <laughs> Joe gave me an interesting point. He liked it a lot. He was like, it gave me a lot of Terraform Mars. He's like, the one thing is, I wish it was. He's like, I wish it was sixty minutes, or it it was like. 75 something minutes. to really make Slightly it like yeah him and jen it. for some reason they've played this game and it takes like three hours to play this game and i'm like aries expedition no oh the, terraforming the, the mars, mars. Like, oh you gotta, just the two of them you gotta speed that shit up man you gotta play if you can play because Devin and i can get through terraforming mars in two hours but do but they are playing. they taking breaks and dealing with the kids Maybe, and doing yeah stuff or, like or, that, you and Devin or are they're like, thinking boom, boom, they're boom. a lot more methodical in the way they like oh, want to do things and Devin and i kind of just play a lot of yeah joe is slower than than you because he's just thinking through because he's thinking through turns and you know wants to to do the best thing yeah but this i think gave him the feel so he enjoyed it but we'll see kind of if he wants to play that yeah. instead. interesting you also might not want to admit it right yeah. for sure yeah <laughs> absolutely not um uh, so it's no secret not that really any board game opinion of mine is a damn secret that i'm not a huge fan of dinosaur island natalie and i had a pretty unsuccessful play when it came out a few years ago but so then dinosaur world i think that's what it's called dinosaur world came out and a lot of people i know really seem to enjoy that and it made me a little bit curious, like half curious. And it wasn't just me. Um, it was both me and Natalie. So I wasn't like uni curious. It was both of us. So we were like bi curious. Oh so I didn't pick up Dinosaur yeah. World. But then out of nowhere, the penis of my soul was completely gripped by the lotioned hand of Blankenwrights. And one. <laughs> And the one penis that, of your soul? He's just expressing his feelings. <laughs> this is just... Don't tell me how this to feel. He feels. Don't tell me how to feel. Okay. And the Everyone one that, has a soul penis. You have, a, you have an external penis. You have a soul penis. Soul yeah, penis. it's my internal penis. Yeah. 
Um, and one that kept erecting it's itself in my face was Dinosaur Island Roar and Write. I finally couldn't ignore this throbbing, bulbous, huge, uh, hung like a dinosaur game any longer and gave it a squeeze. And here's how it goes. So, in Dinosaur Island Roar and Write, you are doing what you're doing in the other games, building out your dinosaur park. Have you played Dinosaur Island, Jeff? No. You've played, you um, played Dino Dinogenics, Dinogenics, which I've heard from a lot of people they like better. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, are you building a dinosaur park in Dinogenics as well? Yes. Okay, okay so yeah, similar like theme to in, both of our games using are the dinosaur. DNA. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah using right. Using DNA. DNA. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so you have two player sheets in this one, similar to Hadrian's Wall, and the game takes place over three phases, rounds, somethings, and each <laughs> one consists of three turns, rounds, or somethings. Basically, you roll and draft dice like Sagrada. Okay, so you roll a number of dice, you know, plus you know one more than the number of players, and you draft it in a. a ladder or a snake or whatever it's called or, yeah right it's maybe it's both of those um then you acquire the resources on those dice by crossing off things on your sheets like dna types coins roads attractions etc and then after you have your dice and your resources you then place those dice onto the main board yes there's a main board in a worker placement style action selection phase which is really cool so let's say you rolled some dice and got some dna strands on your next turn in the next phase you might place your die on a space that lets you create dinosaurs, which you then spend the DNA you acquired earlier to construct. Whenever you create a dinosaur breed for the first time, you get to draw its paddock or like its pen onto the main map on one of your player sheets. And this is the crux of the game. You have this large grid on the top uh, of one of the player sheets that represents your dinosaur park. And you're taking actions to draw dinosaur paddocks, other attractions like food stands and other things onto your player sheet. You then connect all the buildings that you've drawn with roads. And there's a phase of the game where you have uh, like a dino tour, which basically gives you excitement, okay, equal to the number of buildings you can trace a line through from the entryway of your park uh, through these buildings by roads. You want excitement because it only gives you end game victory points, but also gives you lots of juicy income, more DNA, more coins, which you can spend to build more things, more roads and more security. As when you start to create predatory dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rexes, you run the risk of them escaping their paddock and eating people who come to visit your park, which can be devastating to you. After those three rounds, phases or some things are over, the game ends and the most points win. So things I liked. This game was crunchy, and I loved that part of it. Very similarly uh, as to why I love Demeter. It truly felt like a big boy game, and not just a little blank and right, which is really cool. But what makes that even better is that it plays in like 25 minutes, which is everything I could ever want in this stage of my gaming life. <laughs> it really distills Dinosaur Island down in a way that makes it so much fun, and you're constantly engaged and making tough decisions about what to put where and what to go for and where to draw things. You can, you can literally write yourself into a corner. And if you're not careful about your planning and get yourself into a situation where you can't even build any longer. And then you can't even flip the table and feel satisfied because it's just a couple <laughs> sheets of paper. Which, as I'm saying this, I realize I should probably go under things I didn't like. I really like the components of this game and the different cards that will change in each game. And my biggest like is the crunchiness and the timing. Which, again, is probably my biggest like for Demeter, although now that Jeff mentioned what he liked about Demeter uh, is, is the mitigation of randomness with those cards, I think that might be my favorite thing. But overall, between Demeter and Roar and Wright, my favorite, my favorite, like, the thing that makes me, that jumps out at me the most is that they give you a big boy game feel in a little boy game time, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you get a lot of game in a half hour's time with both of these games, and that is a really big point in its favor. Things I didn't like about Roar and Wright. When you flip the table out of anger, it's not as satisfying, again, because only a couple pieces of paper just float in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. What the hell do I not I like, like about this game? <laughs> that's a negative. Well, that's a jokey negative. I don't know what the fuck I don't like about it. it. I didn't love it. You liked it. A lot. I really liked it. I it was way be better to than me, good night. Way better than good night. Great. Was to it me. great? Yeah, I think it was great. Did you already say this is better than Demeter? No. If you had to play, if I like held two in front of you, pick one. Demeter. All right, that's it. You can't change your for mind now. now. No, you can't change your mind. Now. Okay, sorry. Ever. I guess it's always Demeter. You're not allowed. So to <laughs> I've played Demeter more. <laughs> okay. Um, and Demeter surprised me more. So Dinosaur Island Roar and Right. Everybody knows about that game. You know what I mean? Correct. So, like, I was expecting what it gave me. I was expecting it to be this kind of crunchy middleweight, uh, flip and right, or, or I'm sorry, roll and right game uh, based on the based on the you know world of Dinosaur Island, and that's what it gave me. And it gave me more than I expected, but I was still expecting it. Demeter hit me so hard because it was a game I had never heard of, and 
it gave me that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, what is this? Holy cow. And for whatever reason, that, that makes me like, cool. yeah, like that, that surprise kind of like bumps it up the extra notch. However, these are very similarly weighted games, which is awesome. And that's what I'm loving about these these recent spate of flip and right, roll and right games is that they're they're skewing heavier. You know, a lot of the because flip and right, yeah. roll and right, they have been a thing for a number of years. This isn't like some new thing. Right. Um, but usually, when you think of them, or when you used to think of them, you thought of them as like little light games. Yeah, very light think, games that I don't think you know you compete with. That I don't think you compete with the light ones anymore. I think the light ones are so solidified in people's minds. Well, there's and too many. Yeah, they're just people have their light one already. Mm-hmm. They already have their light one, and now that's why Hadrian's Wall did so well. It's like now people have their heavy one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it's like where's the middle I need the middleweight. I don't want another that's what quicks. We've been playing, I'll, I'll play quicks five hundred times. Okay, I would. I don't want another. I don't want another little one. Yes, yep. you're exactly right. You're totally right. And there's not a huge market, or there wasn't, for these middle of the road, maybe middle to heavy ones mm-hmm. and now there's a few that are all of a sudden here you know i would say i would say like light to middle we got with rolling realms because that was that's more than just a nothing little mm-hmm. game you know then we have demeter and roran right that are kind of middle to middle heavy yeah. even twa dice. twa dice is also middle light to middle maybe middle mm-hmm. so those ones are it's it jeff's right there that everybody has their their teeny tiny little roll and right game and there's a fuck ton of them there's so there's many yeah. of them there's just not as many of these heavier ones and these are coming out now and i really really enjoy that so what do you think natalie um so i feel different than you i liked roar and right better better than, than demeter. demeter sure Ooh. did yes. you never mind i don't want to ask right now <laughs> did I, I don't want he wants to wait to see if I... you say it first what no pass <laughs> oh win loss she did win i just want to know if you did better she did better i did better okay but and that that probably. But you is also a big said reason. you liked Demeter and you hate and you did poorly. So I I'm I'm yeah ag- I did like Demeter and I that. did poorly. But I yeah. it's possible even if I take that factor out of it, I think I still like. I think you can. Better. Also, I think you're I don't a grown think enough person to take that. Yeah. Out. And it's not a bad thing to like a game because you did better at it yeah. because you feel good. It oh, feels yeah, good that I, I figured it out more. Yeah. Well, okay. So I guess the main reason I think that I liked. Roar and Write better was because I didn't feel that tight feeling in Demeter. You know, I felt like like I had all these things that I could do. Wait, wait, are you saying you didn't feel that tight feeling like you felt in Demeter? Like I felt in Demeter. Yeah, like I guess the part that like I struggle with in Demeter is that like it's so tight and I'm always like panicked, you know, like what do I do? What's the best thing to do? I don't know. That's what I love about it. You know, but this one, it was a little bit more relaxed in that aspect of yeah. it um yeah, and i true. and it wasn't quite as stressful for me it was more just fun for me okay and um i also you know i because of that i felt like as i'm playing this game because like like you said this game it isn't long either there's yeah. only like three rounds and each round basically has like two uh rounds of action i say it's what do you think 10 minutes longer than Demeter? Yeah. If Demeter's 20 long. minutes, it's probably about a half hour. Yeah. But, I mean, there is more, a little With bit two. more to it, I think. You know, it's yes. not quite as simple. And there's a little bit more to it. There's the rolling thing. And there's, yes. um, I, like, anyways, like I said, I, <laughs> yes. I felt like I was accomplishing <laughs> I things while I was playing this. Okay. Well, in Demeter, I didn't feel like I accomplished, like, a single sure. thing. Sure. Yeah, that's a, um, that's a good observation. But I felt like I was accomplishing anything, but I still had to make, like, some tough decisions um to like choose what to go for not to go for because there's still a lot of options you know like do i want to focus like right on this turn like (laughs) like on building um building or creating dinosaurs or building like you know a building or or hiring a person or whatever um you're saying your minge was wetter for this game than it was for the meter do you think that made sense yes that's what i'm saying i'm gonna get that yeah do you think that makes sense because like that's more logical for you because honestly, when yeah. I played Demeter, I was like, "What am what I, am I doing? Yes. doing?" Yeah, it makes that's me, normal yeah, for your first I two did. games. I'm like, I will okay, say I'm that. I'm creating half of this dinosaur with his butt print and half of this with a footprint, and yeah. then I'm like, I'm drawing this arrow to a book. Yeah, the what? Fuck I, I don't do get that. any of that. Like, I get yeah. like, oh, I'm traveling there, and I'm I feel, again. I feel like theme. what I'm doing is I'm murdering the dinosaur, and then I'm studying, <laughs> it. and I'm like, that's I created its butt, but I haven't created its face yet. But maybe this makes more like logical sense. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also liked in this one, like the production buildup because of that excitement, like chart, you know, like at the beginning, yeah. you, yeah, you yeah. get everything that you've circled in it every right. time you do a production, every time you run production phase or yep. whatever. So 
like, you know, at the beginning I get like a few little things and then later I get like a bunch more things. And at the end I get a bunch of stuff that I can like, like you think you're done and then you run that and you can do a bunch more stuff right before you score. Yeah. That's you know? so, so like that cool. was really fun. Um, and I also thought that the, I don't remember what they're called. I'd call them the death dots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sounds yeah. Good. It's uh, I think it's threat. Oh, okay. The threat. I thought I liked that too. Or I feel like maybe. it was an interesting like wrench to throw in where like it didn't like it wasn't so bad that you felt like it was screwing you over or, or it was But like, it could if you didn't but, pay but attention to it. But you definitely had to keep it in mind. Like I definitely had turns where I had to like think about that. I couldn't just go off and do a bunch of stuff because I had to make sure that I'm safe over here or else I'm going to get some big penalties, you know? So it's like, oh, you always have to have that in the back of your mind. And I, I felt like that was thrown in like just right. And um, I don't know. I really, I thought it was a really fun game and I'm really excited to play that one again. Me too. I was surprised that I would liked it as much because I was like, kind of like Dinosaur the Island Dinosaur did Island not hit. Yeah. Very disappointed by that. And everyone Lo- the hype is like yeah. everyone loved yeah. Dinosaur Island, you know? And so I was like, well, everyone's loving this yeah. game, but I didn't and like that. Am I so, going to like this? So when Jeff talked about Demeter and he was talking about, he was comparing it to like Hadrian's Wall where like like Hadrian's Wall was too much and then this was like cool because it was short, yeah. but it also had like Enough st- a little bit of like amounts. slight yeah. engine-y stuff. I feel like Roar and Wright is just like a step above Demeter in that way, and I wonder if Jeff would like that one better than Demeter too, because it's like it's not. We're trying to get him to like it better it's than still Demeter. Still short. It's Stupid not anything Demeter. like Hadrian. I'm never going to run up, and I'm going to get Roar and Wright. <laughs> He's never playing either of those games. Yeah. I'm going to come to his house and intercept his mail, like so he only has Demeter. To, so he's with me on Demeter. <laughs> yeah, Jeff made some good I points like about Demeter. Demeter. <laughs> I like it, but I like the other one better. It's just that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Maybe I'll pick it up. Did the, are were the di- dice translucent like the other ones? Exactly the same. Good. Yeah. The production don't is yeah. so great. Too. Okay. The production quality like, of it is amazing. Does it fall into that like tra- like uh, the pinks and the yellows and like those bright highlighter colors? No. Like that? No, no it's not like that like eighties. It's that not point. like that eighties theme. But it's also not like standard color either. Okay. Yeah. There's like bright blue, bright and like. I like reds. what you said about the threat. I like just like different shades of like the normal yeah. color. In a lot of like, in, even in Demeter, there's not like a negative thing that you can do. So you're not thinking. You're always like yeah, even in even. Even in Hadrian's Wall, it's yeah. I guess you have to get to certain points to do stuff, but there's never like, oh, this is bad. Right, yeah. I'm doing something that ends up being bad later. In Hadrian's Wall, if you I don't like, do, the, if you don't build the stuff at the top, they come right, through and they, they give you yeah, negative so points. That, oh, true. And yeah, that's so that basically was, that's what true, yeah. that's basically what you have in Roran, right? Where basically you have to. There's a, a thing you take where it's like securing your park, but then if you build and create these predatory dinosaurs, they give you threat. And you basically circle a little tiny ne- death dot, death dot. <laughs> inside yeah. of the circle that you made, which gave you was gave you security. Yeah, like yeah. And so it, and then if you have it, death sure. dots outside of your security dots, then you start taking penalties, which can be very yeah. devastating. Yeah. They wipe away your DNA that you've collected, or they will actually make you kill off a um, a building on your sheet, which now you cannot use to go on your tour to score, like and it yeah. breaks up your roads. But cool. Having said that, it's it's so bad that you have to pay attention to it, but it's not that hard to make sure you're fine. It's not, you know, sure. it's not like, oh, I have like to like only waste all this, t- all these turns. Yeah, it's not you the only thing, but you l- have to think about it because cool. you're like going to get screwed if you don't. It's, um, I guess I'll buy it it really surprised me. Good. I liked it a, I liked it a lot. I, 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 thought, I thought it was great. I really, I thought it was great. Um, so both <laughs> Demeter and Roran Wright blew me away with how like, how heavy they were in a quick amount of time. Because yeah. again, Roran Wright is heavy. Err. Yeah. Than, than something like these two crisscross and second chance sitting right in front of you. Right. Uh, even Twa Dice, it's heavier than that. But you play them in 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, nice. how long did Demeter take us to play? 20 minutes. Yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah. You could play that, you could, right? We could rattle Easy. off three games of that in an hour, and you feel like you played yeah. some games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. this was some stuff. Um, so that is Dinosaur Island Roar and Right. I, I say I would recommend it. I would, too. Okay. I would recommend it. What, what do you got, it. Jeff? I have a non-roll and right. Or Roar and Wright, or Blank and they're all Roar also and part of me when that game came out. I was like, "That's not funny." I don't I like know. it either. I kind of thought that too. <laughs> I was like, like, "You're not Roar cute." And Wright, it's also that, hard. Cute. It's also hard to say. Roar, Roar. Roar. I'm like, Roar. "That's not cute." I Roar. get it. I get it. Yeah. You try to be cute. I'm like, "That's not cute." Yeah. Roar, between the like, name and then the fact that it's Dinosaur Island, which we weren't a fan of, I was went into it kind of like, hmm, "We'll see." But I was like, "This is fun." It sounds a little like Dinosaur Island. Roar and right. You know what I mean? It just sounds a little... Hmm, it's a little... It looks like rar. Yeah. yeah. Rar. Well, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying it is like 
Roar. roar. When you say roar, roar. like R O A R, but it's spelled R A W R. Right. Like, roar. That's why I always. <laughs> roar. Like, roar. No, that's how you gotta do it. Yeah, so what's it called? Natalie, say the whole roar. Roar. Dinosaur Island. Island. Say the whole yeah. name. Dinosaur Island. Roar and right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Roar. Now I'm okay with it. All right. That, I well, think it's adorable. Now it's adorable. <laughs> All right. I played yeah. a new game from AEG just actually last night called Whirling Witchcraft. Whirling oh. Dervish. Because this Whirling Dervish has been everywhere. And let me yeah, tell I've you, seen it like crazy. Yeah, so it's I. What is a I'm dervish? almost positive that it was not Whirling Witchcraft is the name of the game. <laughs> um, Sorry, that it was not out the first day of Gen Con this past year. But I'm pretty sure that it showed up on like a Saturday or Sunday. Right, wow. what? I don't think it was there the first day. Yeah, and I think then people showed they do up that. later. Yeah, AEG they, did that. They did that with Ecos. So I don't know if it was well, a shipping had a lot thing of shipping or whatever. Problems this year because of COVID. Because we got ten, I think, earlier. Maybe the, maybe ten didn't show up till Saturday. Maybe the, mm-hmm. they were both together. But anyway, uh-huh. Whirling uh-huh. Witchcraft, I've, I've seen everywhere. Um, and I, I looked whirling up Whirling Dervish. dervish. I was like, okay. well, I've heard that term. You've heard that term, yeah. right? I'm like, I've what heard the you hell? Guys say it. What the hell is a Whirling Dervish? So here's what Google says: What is a Whirling Dervish? <laughs> whirling <laughs> dervish ceremonies were started as a form of meditation by Jalaluddin Rumi. Okay. The famous so, meditation. Muslim Muslim we'll be right back. Mystic. We're going to go do a whirling dervish. We're going to go do a whirling dervish. Um, <laughs> so apparently it's a ceremony. Okay, it's a ceremony. I thought it was like a Tasmanian devil. I, yeah, I thought it was just something like a whirling, der- <laughs> whirling dervish. Like if I grab somebody by their hair and spun them around, I'd be yep, a whirling they're dervish. They're a whirling dervish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, really. <laughs> Woo! I don't know. <laughs> now, look at that whirling dervish. <laughs> just whirling everywhere. Is that a dervish? <laughs> he's whirling. Oh, he's whirling now. Is there, is is there, there a regular can dervish? Can a dervish not be whirling? Yeah, you see that dervish That's a twisting dervish. Yeah. That dervish yeah. just bent over. Look at the minge on that dervish. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yuck. So, AG came out with Whirling Dervish Witchcraft. <laughs> whirling Witchcraft. Um, it looks like the cover reminds me of, what's that Halloween movie? Hocus um, Pocus? Um, Hocus, Hocus Pocus, Pocus, right? They got yeah. the witches on the front. They're, they're not in there. But um, <laughs> So, I saw this everywhere on Instagram, and I was intrigued. I was like, yeah, let's try it out. Um, it's got a little bit of engine building, um, but... The weird thing is, is you're not engine building for yourself, and that that's weird. But I'll, I'll explain. Really? <laughs> um, so players start with this: like you have this square board in front of you, and you have these five tracks, and the tracks are it just keeps track. <laughs> Damn it. Allow myself to confuse uh. myself. <laughs> these five tracks basically keep track of these different ingredients. Okay, they're goofy shit like toad. Dervish, mushroom, <laughs> dervish, heart of something. They're like, they're like, heart weird. of something. Yeah, heart of dervish. <laughs> so they're like, so there's five different colors. It's blue, green, white, black, and red. Okay, so those five colors. Blue, green, yeah. white, white, black, and well, white is yeah. like the those are five colors. One's like all, all colors. Of the colors. One's yeah, like the last none color of colors. Yeah. <laughs> so those are colors, and there. So it keeps track of those things for you. So you start with that. Everybody gets their own little player power card that tells you what ingredients you start with. You might like start that. with two blues, two reds, and a black Dirt or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then you start with a card of four hands. The recipe cards. A card of four hands. A uh, card of four. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I got it right. <laughs> card of four hands. This is the card, card of four hands. Four, four hands on it. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to play it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You figured it out. AEG. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Thanks, AEG. Yeah. Enjoy the last game that you ever get from AEG. <laughs> hmm. Well, we're out. We're out. <laughs> so you get a hand of four cards. Oh, oh, recipe oh, oh cards. that makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. But does it? No. Um, so four <laughs> recipe cards. Funny, the recipe cards have some conversion of ingredients <laughs> on there, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's like you turn can this turn into this. two mushrooms into three toads, two two reds into three greens, or Please one of these dervish. and one of those, one yeah. dervish into okay. three dervishes. Ooh. So whatever you do, like. <laughs> wow, that's good. And what's kind of cool is these these cards actually um, you can flip them. So a lot of them can go both ways. They're bi curious. Um, so you, you can, already uh, got a yeah, callback to the yeah. joke. That was impromptu right there. Yeah. Beautiful. So you can. So, for example, if one was like, turn two mushrooms into three toads, if you flipped it around, you could turn three toads into two mushrooms. Ooh, oh, you yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah, he's doing a little uh, dance, little too. It makes me yeah. like, ooh. So, everybody picks one card from those four, plays it in front of them all at the same time, and then you basically do your conversions. So, in round three or four, you're going to have three or four cards in front of you, and you do your conversions of all the stuff yeah. you want. So, you're you like take recipe the conversions. stuff from your board, and you put them on the recipe cards, and then you produce the bottom stuff. Okay. And the stuff that you produce actually goes into this little cauldron. That's where a lot of the pictures on Instagram, if you're like, what the hell is this cauldron? You yeah. put all the stuff into a cauldron. Is it actually like a bowl? Yeah, it's like, um, yes, it's a plastic, uh, not plastic, it's a cardboard. You put it together, mm-hmm. you punch it out. It almost says like a cross 
that like fits yeah. and then you put a circle so on top of it. it's very Christian. Oh, cool. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you, <laughs> well, so crawl. you fill in your cauldron with the stuff that you produced and you pass that stuff to the player on your right. Ooh. Okay, so you pass that stuff to the player on your right and then the player on your right has to take all those ingredients and put it on their board. Okay. So yeah. they're yeah, getting yeah. this stuff. Oh, well, like your that. goal is, is to overflow their board. Oh, so you want to so, convert stuff to a bunch of... You want to convert of, stuff. So I'm like, oh man, Natalie's can, got... So Natalie only this. has four... She's only got four spots for green left. I'm going to try to produce a shitload of greens and send it over hey, there to overflow her. So, GOB. All right, sorry. <laughs> That's right. So then <laughs> every time... Nat, so if I, let, let's give that example. So yeah. Natalie only has three spots in her green left. Yep. I produce four Give and I send her. them over now to Natalie. She explodes. Right? So she then has too much shit on her workbench. I get the leftover. I put the leftover on my board. That's one point for me. As soon as you oh, get to so five, that doesn't count as as you overflowing now. You put that in a different area that scores for you. Yeah, so I now score. I have one you point. Score there. You overflow. played a five oh. point. So your goal is to overflow your neighbor. What to happens the right to Natalie now that she's been overflowed? Does all that wipe? No. So she's just going to keep. She's going to have overflowed? to keep producing. She's oh. going to have to try to get another card get, that yeah, produces to produce green to or get whatever away. to get rid of oh. stuff. Um, it's, so then you take the stuff that you gave me, and now I use that to convert. Now you have, yeah, so yeah, your board will fill up with other okay. stuff. I've been right? saying a lot of, oh, yeah. ah. So it's a weird thing where you're building your engine, but you want to focus on what your person next to you doesn't need. Okay. Or or needs in your in your sense, because you want to overflow them. So if you, yeah. you know, if I send her, if I would have sent her six greens, and she overflowed by three, I would get three points. Oh, so you could and, hypothetically win in one go. Yeah, I don't know if it would happen, but yes, you in theory could if you somehow had like the best whatever. Sure. Yeah, um, really but that, at the same time, Ryan's trying to overflow mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I'm passing. So at the end of every round, you take the cards that you picked from and you pass them to the player on your left. So I'm actually passing the cards to Ryan that he's going to pick from to try to blow up my cauldron. Wow. And Natalie's passing me her, right? So then, because I'm, you're Oof. passing the cards to the left, the cauldron goes to the right. Yeah. In a two-player game, you just pass them yeah. shit back and forth. This is kind of super simple. We just played a two-player. Okay. Dev and I were done in like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> the game takes no time Great. whatsoever, which was good because you don't want, like, if yeah. you would to play the 10, you would have been like, okay, now you're to a point where every time I'm going to just, I'm going to blow you up. Yeah. But it ended quick enough because your point was, I'm going to keep attacking green. Right. Right. But now it's, if I'm, I don't might not have the conversions to attack green because you're sending me blue. Right. right? If I, you're sending me blue and I, I now need to spend I my blue. that you're to, getting stuff from so the player yeah. to your left. So there's a, there's a balance there and I think it ends at a right time. I think with more people, it would take like 30 minutes and done. The box says 30 minutes. I think that's it. Pretty I, I don't think it would be longer than that. Or this is exactly be. the kind of game I'm and looking for right now. I like that the cards kind of convert both ways. Um, Mm. there aren't like a massive amount of decisions. (laughs) It's fast. Um, I like that you pass your cards. I think there'd be more to think about if you decide, if you wanted to like game the game, Mm -hmm. think about what you're passing to the people on your left and think about like, Oh, Ryan needs to, he's going to try to blow me up with blue. I'm not sending him shit for turning. things. Right. So try to do that a little bit. Devin and I were just going back and forth. I like the player powers. My player power is I didn't start with a lot of resources. Um, but at the beginning of every one of my turn, I had to take three of the same color. So Uh-oh. Devin started with more resources, right? Because she's closer to blowing up. Mm-hmm. But I have to take three of the same color every single time. I think it's a really good game for, like, nons. I think yeah. if you have mom and dad over and you want to just play a game, it sets up in no time. You can teach it to them in five minutes. Mm-hmm. And then it's it's easy laughing around the table of passing these cauldrons around. And How and many does it play? It plays five. Yep, two to five. One, two, yep. Um, there is like just randomness in cards and I wrote down like like Ryan said, it could end quick where like I might get everything I need to to like blow up your to cauldron in five or six turns. Mm-hmm. Uh which Devin and I played I think five or six turns. But on one turn, she like hit me for like three and yeah. I didn't have enough. So I she got three points on that turn. So it wasn't like one point, one point, one yeah. point. Yeah. Okay. Um you want probably to go over. I think people are going to reach the same point at around the same time. Devin and I both tied at six. Okay. So you actually like five ends the game, but you probably want like seven. You know, you want that bigger <laughs> number sort of sure. sort of finish it. Um, I there wasn't with it only being like twenty minutes. There wasn't a lot to like dislike. Right. It's in that category of like, well, it's twenty minutes. Like, how else was I going to spend twenty minutes? Yeah. That was that was fun. It was fun to just pass. Yeah. Spend, back you'll spend twenty minutes doing anything. I'll spend twenty minutes doing anything. <laughs> I wish I could spend twenty minutes doing something. Um, <laughs> and yeah, th- I think the randomness of the cards, or not knowing what to pick, or you might just get screwed with what you get passed. That 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 could be annoying, yeah. but it shouldn't annoy you to play a twenty minute game and and that. So I think it's a, yeah. a good game to be in a collection for nons or just like a super light 
um, kind of easy game night. I know it's like a 7.3 on Board Game Geek, which is... Um, yeah, well, I quickly went to the comments. Do you mind if I read a couple of no, people, what people are saying? Uh, Lyndon Johnson says, <laughs> <laughs> yes. pretty quick game of feeding your opponent trash in the hopes that they can't use, store the resources, and bust. It's a lot about timing, uh, when and what to feed and starve your target. At player counts above three, you have no interaction with the extra players, which can make their victory or defeat feel unsatisfying. So you're only you're only yeah, because you're left only- and right. Which is, yeah, uh, there's a lot not, of games that work that way. Right. It's, yeah, it's like a Seven Wonders, right? You're only dealing with your neighbors. Right. Um, Vlaralorn says, extremely fun game. Trying to bust the person to your right. Simple to teach and play and finishes exactly when it's supposed to, which mirrors pretty much exactly yeah, what you that's said. perfect, yeah. Jorf says, oh, Jorf. this game is honestly the perfect entry into engine builders. The entire game can be condensed down to resource management. The player to one side generates resources that are given to you, and you must consume those to generate resources that you'll pass to another player. It's a delicate balance of dealing... Uh, with what's being dumped on you and controlling how you're trying to overload the person you're giving resources to. Yeah. I can't believe I enjoyed this game so much, but it is really fun. Being a card drafter, every playthrough ends up being unique, and no two games are quite alike. Very solid game. Yeah, I would, and there's um, probably 12 to 15 different player powers that you can Ooh. use. There's also the cards have this little icon on it that also triggers kind of cool actions that you can do or like a bonus action. Okay. Um, I would love to play it with more because the the card drafting and the passing back and forth is just between Devin and I. I think this game would probably shine at maybe at least three because then you're all kind of interacting with each other yep. at the table. Sure. So that would be cool. So I would definitely play it with three, four, and five next. I don't think I'll reach for it on just a Devin and me game night. There's plenty of other two-player games that we can play in 30 minutes that – or 20 minutes that I would get more out of than playing Absolutely. this. But for – for to end – bless you. To end maybe a game night or whatever just – you know, again, mom, dad come over, you know, Frankie and Kyle aren't in the mood for playing a real game, which they usually are. But if they're not, they, they, yeah. it's a good one to just kind of. Well, that was the first thing I thought of when you said through. that, when you were like, non. I mean, they're not nons anymore, but no, they're but, that, but that's what but, I, that's what I felt like um, yeah. when you said that. Very so cool. Yeah. Whirling Dervish. Yep, that's Whirling Witchcraft Whirling Dervish Witchcraft by Dervish. AEG. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been gobbling up like Hungry Hungry Hippos every blank and right game we can lately, and we had the opportunity to play a game called Metro X recently. You might have seen this one around uh, Instagram or so, and we shoved it like white marbles into our mouths, and in this game, you are creating a subway network, and there are basically a bunch of interconnecting lines on your player sheet, each of them having a start and an ending, and each of these lines has a certain number of circles. That you're going to be crossing off, to f- which which basically uh, denotes that you're finishing them, okay? Um, on your turn, a card flips up and has a number on it. You will cross off from left to right that number of dots on a subway system of your choice. And I think there are nine systems, right? It goes A all the way to I, I, I think. I think so. Uh, they all intersect in crazy ways, but they also have a clear starting and end point. If you are able to fill in an entire system... You get points for that, and most points at the end wins. There are also other cards that come out other than just numbers, like a number with the word skip on it. Uh, You can and will get yourself into situations where you will have, say, three X's in one row, and then because you crossed off X's in another row, it intersected with that first row, but like a little bit later on in the the line. path, Okay. (laughs) So then there's a few blanks in between your X's, and normally you have to stop as soon as you reach an X. So if there's only one space in between and the number five card comes up, you can only cross off one X in that line. You're wasting those other four. But with the skip card, you can jump over those X's and keep going. The thing is that when you flip a card, you can't just keep crossing X's off in the same system because each system, A through I, uh, will only let you cross off uh, and and write numbers in there two or three times for the whole game. So it's much toiter than you might think. Toit. Um, I was very surprised by this game. I expected it to be a little nothing game and just not care about it at all. I expected it to be fun, but not something I would want to instantly purchase after I played it. But Which I instantly did. purchased it after I played it. <laughs> this was actually very surprising, filled with a lot of in-game dread, which I seem to really enjoy in my blank and rights, apparently, because that's what Demeter gives you, <laughs> is that in-game dread of, I don't know what I'm doing, and oh my gosh, we're in turn seven, and I've done nothing. And <laughs> you yeah. have that feeling like, it's almost like embarrassment, in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're almost like... I'm Why gonna, am I terrible? I'm going to score 10 points, and then everyone's going to laugh, because this is terrible. And that's how I felt in Metro <laughs> X. I was like... I'm not going to get one of these nine subway systems completed, oh, and we're same almost thing. done. I was like, I'm not going to finish a single one. Holy crap! They're going to be like, <laughs> "You're a podcaster." Oh, there you go. <laughs> the entire game, I, I felt that exact thing. Um, 
But then we did. <laughs> yeah, it was like, <laughs> yeah. I will never do anything. I'm going to do bad, and I should feel bad. So as the game goes on, you kind of figure it out. And it's yeah. really awesome when that card comes up that gives you the exact amount you needed to skip over a few and then make it to the end, and all of a sudden you score seven points for that row. <laughs> yeah. uh, and again, it's so it's over so quickly that it that feeling is fun. If So that dread feeling where you feel stupid, there's... There's a tightrope like line to cross there. If you have that feeling in a game that takes two hours, I think you're not having fun. Yeah. You know, now you're like, I don't want to play this anymore. It's making me feel dumb. Right. In a game this short, it's great because it it doesn't last long. It comes very quickly and you're like, (gasps) and then it's over really quickly. And all of a sudden you're like, (sighs) (laughs) so I thought I was, I was, yeah, I was like really (laughs) embarrassed. I was like, I'm not going to score anything. And you say that out loud so people don't think you're stupid at the end. <laughs> and then I won. And it was like, oh, you're like, I won, I won oh. this? Well, I guess I wasn't doing as poorly as I thought. And yeah. you kind of felt that as you're going through the game, yeah. um, which is very cool. So it gives you the exact amount that you needed um, in a game like this of dread with the playtime, which, again, the playtime in this game, 20 minutes. You know, it's basically the same as again Demeter and Roar and 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 Rar and, and right and right <laughs> Rar and right. So things I didn't like. There's not that much game here. Okay, so it's good for what it is, but it's not going to break any ground, and it's not trying to. I don't think. Um, but it, it's just a light strategy game, Jeff. It's a light strategy game. Uh, but if you're expecting to find the next game you absolutely love, it's not that. Where I do think that you could find that thing in a game like Demeter or Rar and right. <laughs> It's just an, a. This one is just an above average, surprisingly good flip and right game that I'm very happy to play again and add to my collection because I do think that this will see some play. I think this is a good a good one. To be like, hey, no one's heard of this game. Let's bring this out, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And that's the niche that it fills yeah. in our collection. It's like a filler. What did you think, Natalie? Uh, this game, I had a lot of the same thoughts as you. This was su- surprisingly tough, but I really liked it. Um, it seems like it seems so simple at first. You know, you're looking at all the lines and you're like, oh, I just cross these off and finish them. Okay, no big deal. And then you're just like all of a sudden like tangled up in this like web of yeah. metro lines. And you're right. just like, how did this happen? How did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm screwed myself. I mean, you're right. It's yeah. such like a, it's, it's a short, simple game, but I feel like <laughs> it packs in so like such a big range of emotions yeah, in that a lot time of dread. because at the beginning, like I said, you're just kind of like, okay, like no big deal. I'll just mark this off. And then suddenly you're like, oh shit, that was on this line. Now it's blocked, but now I need to skip. Yep. So I can't even if use that. I don't that get a skip, skip card. Or I can't like, play. Yeah. So like you, you need skips and they're not coming out and you're like, oh no. Or like you're trying to figure out which line you can even fill anything in on without a skip card. Or sometimes you're like, oh, I'm just going to finish this one. Oh shit. I already filled in all the boxes Whoopsie. for its numbers. So I can't even use this one anymore. And there's that dread you know? again. Uh oh, yeah, now I can't even like, do it. <laughs> you're just like, ah, and like, or like, I'm never going to finish any of these. And then you somehow in the end, yeah. Finish a few. You can get like four, four <laughs> of the I nine. Did like four. Yeah, yeah, me too. Maybe. I did like four of them. Or whatever. But it was just, it was, um, that did make it fun because it was, you don't take it too seriously. You're just marking off boxes and it's just like so simple and, um, and so short that that crazy range of emotion in that short time was enjoyable and silly and fun yeah i totally agree i totally agree i think it's a really good game this is from game right yeah i don't yeah. remember i don't know when this came out this i don't think it's brand new uh but it's a it's really fun i really enjoyed it i think that jeff you would probably not buy it okay like we good. did I don't want to but i think that. if you played <laughs> like it played you would it. enjoy it yeah. i think yeah. you would like it i do i think you would like it um for me, it, it gave like Natalie said, it was that it was that feeling in the middle game where you were just like, I can't do anything. How am I going to do everything? There's got to be a way. It's going to happen. I need this card to come up. Oh my gosh, will that card come up, please? Yeah. And then that was the turning point for me where I was like, okay, this is this is cool. Yeah. I like this. Cool. So I'm just glad my friends have it and I can play it. Yeah, you can play it right yeah, now. Yeah, you can play absolutely. it sometime. Exactly. So that's Metro X b- before the next podcast. Okay. Yeah, we might be able to. Yeah, because we'll have it funny. soon. Because yeah. I bought it. <laughs> so, like Ryan has been very impulsively buying games. Yeah, you know, like yesteryear. This like, man's trying to like last um, night. Call his collection down to 150. <laughs> <I know. laughs> That's you know why it was really funny when you said 150 that. 150 small box games. <laughs> I like heard that. I was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jeff dude Jeff's like he's like dude I remember this one it's gonna be so great like, when you yeah. see it <laughs> this man but like you you just tried to do that with the whirling witchcraft you were like you're like oh what and I saw you typing it I was like no you have a Molly gift goes, card we'll play Honestly, it. I could bring it for the next no he can buy it, it but I'm just saying like he has a gift card to a game store like stop just like going online and buying it like the it's second so everyone's hear about it, it yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry so yeah that's anyway. that's so those are the games we've been playing uh, lately yeah I'd like to talk to you all for a moment about the Gateway Board Gaming Network, which you can find at www.thegatewaynetwork.com and the Gateway Network on Instagram. The sole purpose of the network is to help new or up-and-coming content creators grow by shouting each other out. If you go to the Gateway Network website, you will find other amazing content creators who are trying to grow as well. They are all amazing people who produce fantastic content. It's very exciting, due also in large part to the merch store there. Yes, we've got a merch store, which you can find at www www.thegatewaynetwork.com forward slash store. There you can find so many amazing items from a large portion of our members. Whatever kind of content you're looking for, the Gateway will have it. If you're a newer board game content creator and you're looking for a way to grow your content, please consider heading over to thegatewaynetwork.com to learn more. If you're looking to support the show, maybe consider flushing your money down the GameCaster's toilet by way of our Patreon page. There are four different tiers which will get you access to behind-the-scenes content, exclusive content, or content ahead of time. You will also get swag that nobody else has access to and just the opportunity to help out and support a podcast which you sometimes listen to. We have amazing patrons. Thank you so much for your support, guys. If you'd like to donate to help us pay for things like hosting fees and that blank, that Jeff's had his eye on, please head on over to patreon.com forward slash the GameCasters to help out. The GameCasters Twitch account has relaunched and we're live every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday night streaming board game and video game content and having a blast talking to all of you. If you just simply can't get enough GameCasters in your day, please consider heading on over to twitch.tv forward slash GameCasters and give us a follow and maybe a sub. I have the best time streaming for everyone and it's just a super fun place to unwind after a long day and watch someone who is trash at games play games. Come hang out and engage with me in a way you never thought you had to before, but I'm sorry you do twitch.tv forward slash gamecasters possibly the best way to interact with all of us though is via our discord server if you go to the gamecasters instagram page you can check out our link tree in our bio to get access to our server it's a great way to engage with all three of us on a daily basis as well as meet a bunch of like-minded awesome people so check out our discord server why don't you step dum, dum, inside? Dum, Come on, it's dum, warm dum, in there. Dum, you think you found dum, some grass, dum, but nope, it's pubic dum, hair. Dum, you wonder why dum, there's so dum, much dum, underwear. Dum, you stepped dum, inside of Natalie's dum, Nook. Hello, and today, Hello. Natalie's Nook. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Guess what our topic is? It's blank and right. Oh, no way. <laughs> I heard of this. This is surprising for what <laughs> we've you been talking it? about in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is a blank and right game? The funny thing mm, really? I found is uh-huh. that I Googled blank and right and I looked it up in BGG. That's not a term that people no, use. No, it's well, not. it's not like a legitimate, it's not like a realistic term because it, it started be with like rolling. Yeah, right. yeah, I was it like, did we? It won't be under mechanism. Did we yeah, make when this you look up? At it. <laughs> like, that's how like, we did not. Did we start this? Maybe, maybe we did. No, we did not make it up, but it is a thing people say because there's so many different kinds. Right, people mostly refer to flip and write and roll and write um yes. and there's and a Roland there's right. a bunch of other Roland. ones but <laughs> i haven't ever seen blank and write which is i feel like the perfect way to just describe yeah, all of encapsulate them encapsulate all of them the whole category mm-hmm. but anyways um but this this type of game um usually includes an element of writing hence the right okay got it and oh so it's like w r yes i thought it was like right oh. or wrong I oh, thought it was no, like no, no, right no, or guys, left. roll no. or and then look to your roll right. Roll and then you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so blank and right games usually or always include an element of writing. Um, you might be like filling in a box, checking a box, coloring or outlining a shape, stuff like that with a pencil or pen or dry erase marker. Um, and in, in addition to that, you're also either like rolling dice for like a roll and write, flipping over cards for like a flip and write. Um, Even drafting cards now we played yeah. in Boomerang. And then there's a bunch yeah. of other ones. I think Metro X was called a rail and right. Rail so doing and that right. little play on work it's things like right. the uh, raw and right. But I mean, Hadrian's Wall, it's not, it's like, I guess you are flipping right, a card. Now there's but, other ones that aren't as um, obvious yeah, <laughs> about yeah. what it would be called. Um, and just, I'm sure everybody knows what these are, but just here's a list of examples of blank and right type games. Um, Hadrian's Wall, Second Chance, Cartographers, 
Dinosaur Island, Rawr and Right, rawr, Silver rawr. and Gold, Crisscross, Demeter, Boomerang, Ganshan Clever. Welcome Ooh, to yeah, Castle Party, Quix, Fleet the Dice Game, Railroading, Corinth. Remember that one? Yeah, I do remember Corinth. And, uh, oh, I didn't rolling play that. Realms. <laughs> yeah, you don't, just buy it. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Yeah, Ryan's gonna um, buy it. Can you pause? We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to have an open discussion um, about kind of like two different things. What do you like or dislike about blank and write games? Yep. And also the concept is fairly new you know but in recent years it has like exploded and why do you think that is oh okay um do you want to go first do you want no. me to go first okay well, I'll go we can first. just all like oh we can just chit chat chit chat oh okay it's just like an open di- yeah i know we can speak turns. we can speak we yeah. don't have to okay yes. what do we have to do uh, whatever we want uh, i want to answer your the question you just asked first where you said um what did you say what was this last thing you said yeah, what was this? first what's this about the last thing you said what i said was um was why do you think they're popular? Exploded. Mine, okay right. <laughs> well for me personally and i'm guessing this is what people enjoy about these games are they are extremely quick typically yes there is very very little setup yep. usually very little rules overhead and you get to play a game and it is just in intrinsically i want to stop using the word inherently it's intrinsically fun no, inherently fun. It's explicitly, it's implicitly, <laughs> oh there's some God. fun to be had. It's really fun to just honestly cross things off. That was all just from his brain. That And was mark stuff off. <laughs> it's kind of okay. Yeah. It it's a fun, fun thing to do to like check a box yeah. or shade in a, a dinosaur or, yes. you know, color in something. Like second chance, half the fun of second chance is getting out the colored pencils and drawing yeah. those and polyamino shapes one different color with that. And then That's, seeing like the... Are you answering this question? I'm so sorry. Or am I I'm just kidding? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. No, exactly. You're totally right. Ryan. That um, <laughs> that sort of thing is just really, really fun to do. Uh, that's one of the reasons I like the game Cartographers a lot, because you're drawing these shapes and then there's all these little different shapes that you're putting in them, you're coloring inside of them to be like, okay, this one is this, you yeah, know, because these are the, this is how yeah. these are houses. And yeah. This is, these right. are trees. These are the right. trees. Right. So right. that's and really yeah. that part of it. It's almost right. like it has a, a lot going for it's it. It's almost like a ways. meta. It's like you get to be I don't, artistic isn't the word, but you get to be creative. It's not the word. It's like you get to just kind of like. <laughs> is it fun? It's get to have a little fun. Yeah. That's not the yeah. word, though. It well, just needs I mean, to be a new in, word. In board games, you're never you're never you like getting out a pencil or whatever. Mm. or a marker and like doing anything like that you're always moving pieces or rolling dice and this you get to actually like write and yeah. know why that just it's feels different just a and fun new fun experience i think yeah. to do that now what i think uh so for me what i those things i just explained are what i love about them and i think what a lot of people love about them is especially in a game like demeter or and right <laughs> or even twa dice you know or something like that yes you can now get a game yeah where you feel like like I feel good about like if we play crisscross, we could play crisscross ten times in a row, and it's like it's still it just feels like you're chewing bubble gum. It still feels like you're playing tic tac toe or something. Yeah, right. It doesn't feel you don't get a. There's not a good. It's just light and nothing. It's nothing. It's fun. Yeah. Chewing gum can be fun. It's it fun. tastes kind of good, but you're not getting full from that. Yeah, yeah. But it's you a play a game, game. like Rar and Right or Demeter or Hadrian's Wall, <laughs> you and you feel like gum. you've had a meal. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, you, have, you swallow exactly. the gum, and then you feel like the gum nervous. you swallowed Hope is from Willy Wonka. Out. I've had a lot yeah. of Willy Wonka references lately, yep. Yep. where it just gives yeah. you an entire five course dinner, yeah. and it's that's what I like that roll and write, blank and write, flip and write. You know, uh, rail and write that genre gives you draft and write is that you can get you can now get a game game yeah. and feel like you played something good in a very very quick time and yeah. it's fun to color in check off tick yeah, off yeah that's boxes. a good point it's interesting how like they did kind of seem to start out as like small little simple games and then they've evolved into like some heavier meteor meteor <laughs> medium weight little meteor little bit yeah, heavier meteor. Little type meteor. games and now. <laughs> There's just now there's so many options and it is like a full blown out genre well, of a And to Jeff's game. point that he made earlier about how there's already a shit ton of the little ones. Yeah. I think people saw that and were like, wow, there's a shit ton of these little ones and they do really well. Mm-hmm. We can we now know that this genre is viable. Let's see how we can push the limits of it. Let's see what we can do with this. Now that we know crossing off a box is fun, people are enjoying writing a little shape into it cuz well, second chance is just a fucking square grid yep. that you're writing Tetris pieces into. That's it. That's and, and it. Try to fill up and all it's the squares. It's super great. It's right. really fun. So we were like, okay, that's viable. Mm-hmm. How can we expand that and to make it something, you know, 
a little Demeter. Right, but then there's like silver <laughs> and gold, which is like I wouldn't say it's anything close to like Demeter or like the raw and right, but Rawr. it's but it's Every definitely I know. more challenging than like Second Chance or a crisscross. Right. Same with know? Rolling Realms. Rolling Realms is a similar one to that, yeah. where it's like there's a little more to it. It's still not like but it's still a pretty light game. Yeah, Genshin's clever, similar thing. You know, yeah. it's, there's not like it's not like busting your your head open. But it feels a little gamier <laughs> than just like what? <laughs> Why is it? I have injuries. <laughs> oh my God. But at the same time, you still feel it's, it's fun. And again, I really think what people enjoy. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. It's Let's fun. summarize it. <laughs> the abstract of this conversation. Rolling rights are fun. Blanket like, rights I equal need to let fun. You yeah. talk now for a while. Rolling well, rights are fun. I just want to say that was also one of the same, same things that I like the most about them. I mean, you're right. There is some yeah, they make sort your of feel weird. <laughs> Ryan, Ooh, there's, some some, there's some sort of <laughs> thing I can't great. explain about why it's fun to like write stuff or check boxes or whatever. But the main reason is that they are all, no matter what the weight, very easy to set up and yeah. easy to learn and you know quick. Yeah. In in play. how long it takes to play. <laughs> but Jeff, what do you not like about them? <laughs> Ooh. Don't tell, we don't give a shit what you like about them. So don't fun. Care. Don't they're give so a fun. Don't give a fuck what you like about them. Like. I looked up some things. So I have. I feel like I have been alive for the entire roll and write era. Yeah, agreed. Right. Yep. So I've seen the Yahtzee. beginning. Of Yahtzee is the Quicks. beginning. Yeah. <laughs> seen the beginning of Quicks, and I've seen it evolve into Hadrian's Wall. And I think because the majority of my gaming saw just a lot of those those simple ones, the quicks and the variations of quicks that I was like, okay, cool. I've seen them. I've played yeah, them. Yeah. And they, they don't never give me grab anything. my attention. Yeah. And now having played a couple of the heavier ones, maybe I need to start now looking at them reassess. a little more because I would just kind of ignore them. Yeah. When I scrolled through new games coming out this year or, you know, these things and I, and I see something like Twa dice, I'm like, I just would rather play Twa. Like, yeah. Yeah. But now do I like, do I just want to play twad dice instead? Yeah. So I'm maybe I'm try maybe I need to go back and look at some of them. Cause they never, they never like grab my attention. Well, that's funny because like, that's kind of how we felt for a while. Like we were like really into them at first. We were like, this is so cool. And then we we're kind of like, they're all kind of the same. And then we kind of like, cool down on it but then we played hadrian's wall and we we're like what yeah, then but then you played hadrian's wall and you were kind of like this is a little too much oh my god my minge was so slippery <laughs> your minge but, is but maybe like now that you played the medium inflamed. the in between my willy I mean, now is you're so like, yeah and again i'm not it's it. not like i didn't like By hadrian's truth. wall i really i i really liked hadrian's wall but it was just it was like you're like it probably touched like, that line of like okay do i want to do this or do i want to play like grand austria hotel do i just want to play a game if i'm yeah. gonna like do, but again it's it's me changing that mindset of maybe this is what a flip and right slash roll and right is i looked up so on bgg there are 641 games that are defined as a Holy roll and right crap. and 82 <laughs> defined as a flipping flip and right wow so and this would be p different gamers have different opinions i don't need 82 flipping rights. No. no for sure but do I want 82 uh, worker work placement, placement games? games? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe I do. There's more. I also know that like a lot of these, so another dislike for me, a lot of these flipping rights, rolling rights, they don't have, if you are into theme, they're themeless. Yeah. You can pretend that you're making a dinosaur park. No, you're checking off boxes, <laughs> right? You're not. You're writing squares that. into a you're, grid. That right. is not, so you can like try to be like, rawr, but you're not, <laughs> right? You're just, you just <laughs> marked off an X. Ryan James, um, AFK. Sorry. And <laughs> oh so God. like Demeter could have been, I could have just... You know, those, those things could have just been boxes instead of the shapes of dinosaurs, right? So it was right. like the theme of it doesn't ever call to me. Yes. But when I'm playing Dinogenics and I have like little dinosaur meeples and I have fences and I'm building fences, yeah. that could get me into the theme. Like, okay, now I'm doing something here. Right. But totally. these are just marking off things, which I, I like. It's like to Ryan's point, Ryan, <laughs> they're fun. It's fun to make those marks yeah. because I think the marks lead to other marks and then you get excited as you start to make more right. check marks or boxes or color things in. So I like them. They never grab my attention. I like that the complexity is starting to like widen. Mm -hmm. Like you have this huge, I just wrote down the scale. It probably goes from Quicks to Hadrian's Wall. Yeah. I think that's, Quicks is probably the lightest, simplest game ever. No, like in, in that yeah. genre, probably to hadrian's wall being the most complicated yes but i'm i'm starting to get more intrigued with you guys talking about the rar and right and ones. playing demeter seeing maybe those middle of the road ones because if i'm gonna play hadrian's wall do i want to play hadrian's wall or do i just want to play istanbul do i want to play right. Zolkin? Yeah. do i just want to play a game if i'm gonna sit down for two hours an hour and a half 
So, but maybe these 30 minute middle right, but maybe ones. if there's something that's shorter, but it's not these simple ones that you're sick of, that'll be something you're going to get into. So maybe you guys make me want to buy something. <laughs> um, also, I found this, somebody had on Board Game Geek had said this, um, what they like about these type of games. And I thought this was interesting. Um, if they said, if I had to boil it down, I think what I like about these games is, is, uh, what I like in games with prominent elements of chance in general, the ability to mitigate luck to some degree and the ability to pursue different strategies without one being obviously dominant. And I thought that was a good point because like um, almost every single roll and write or blank and write game, there's going to be luck in it because you're rolling a dice, you're flipping a card, you know, you're doing something that's going to be random. Yeah. But at the same time, maybe some of like the medium to heavier ones you also have a chance to like mitigate that luck a little bit. You know, you have different choices. Yeah, I think that person probably likes the middleweight. The Demeters, yeah. the Raw and Right, the Twa Dice, the Welcome right. Tuesday, the Cartographers likes those middleweight ones. Yeah. Would probably not want to play necessarily second chance because that's, yes, you have a decision of where you want to put it in your box, but toward the end, you're like, well, it can only be an L. I only right. have space for an L. So if it's not an L, I'm screwed. And it right. is random instead of <laughs> kind of having five choices every round. Right. So I like, I like that that idea i do know that also if you decide to play a roll and write over at joe madigan's house you better bring your own fucking pencil because that dude pencils. has no writing utensils is <laughs> his entire house oh we God. play so we play jaws of the lion not a roll and write um all you need to do at the end of that game is just check off like your missions or whatever yeah. and we have to like pass one dull ass pencil around <laughs> that we found under the couch oh my and we're like God. passing it around and we're like oh i need that back and you get it back and you write down you cross things out <laughs> Um, he has kids. How does he not have, I have writing utensils? I have no utensils? idea. There's probably markers somewhere. But like, <laughs> yeah. I don't want a marker. I want just like one pencil to put an X yeah. in thing. So he has no pens and pencils. That's so I really do funny. also appreciate that when uh, the rolling rights have also moved to like dry erase because there's you have a finite number of plays in theory yeah. with rolling rights. So second chance, you can play that game 100 times. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. And you probably not play it 100 times. Right. The only game I've ever bought extra sheets for is Quicks. Yeah. <laughs> And the game is almost the same price as just buying the extra sheets. So I think oh, yeah. I bought two I know copies. Ryan has printed them and laminated them. So you yes. can use uh, dry erase on so them. So thankfully, some of these ones have gone away from the paper. And again, if you're thinking like environment, which frustrating, yeah. I'm not. I should be. So let's go back. I'm thinking of the environment. <laughs> and you don't want to yeah. keep throwing away this paper all the time. You can create these, you know, the, these awesome dry erase ones with good markers the writing utensils are already in the box. Yeah. You can play it as much as you want. Because we just played Demeter. I don't know how many sheets are in there. It's usually like a hundred. You probably yeah, get a hundred sheets. A lot. So you guys can probably play that. You know, if you're playing just the two of you, you can play it 50 times, but I just played it. Right. So now you're down to like 40 plus. So there is a finite number. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do you do? Do companies sell just like replacement sheets? Right. Yeah. That's a good do point. You? But I love that people have started to move to right. more Especially of the like the ones stuff. like Rolling Realms. Yeah, me too. Ra- was it Rolling Realms? <laughs> rolling Realms back. and um, <laughs> Silver and Gold. They, they're they not even like the glossy um Oh, yeah, like so whiteboardy nice. stuff. It they're like, yeah, like they look finish. like actual cards. The whiteboard technology like, has come a long way. Yeah, the whiteboard technology is amazing because they don't even really seem to like leave residue like the whiteboardy stuff yeah. does. So that I appreciate both. Again, from a but that is a good point. They that I care about the environment it. to also they should the include fact you don't have a finite. In them they should just put pencils. in When them. we just played the raw and right, we had to, we took pencils out of cartographers and just used. Yeah, those. some of them do. Them. And cartographers I, had cute little pencils with erasers on them. The best just pencil erasers. The best pencils. The hive yeah, mind. You played hive have mind. Erasers. You know hive mind. Hive mind has full size actual pencils real with pencils. On them. Real yeah, pencils. That's so again, that's a minor complaint. But just have again, if you don't play them at Joe's house you probably have pencils yeah. around your home That's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> saying joe doesn't have any pencils yeah well it's funny i will say having kids like they use that stuff all the time and so like there was one day ryan was like laughing at me because i'm like there's always just pencils everywhere all over the floor i'm just like picking up pencils <laughs> yeah. off the floor like constantly that's like a that's it's like a christmas present if you're a teacher thing. out there and you're listening so sam um, <laughs> yeah. nestor measles yeah mr measles yeah. if you i like when i find pencils devin I'm brown i'm like i'm like yes and devin i'm like yes and i put it i like like little bonus because I give out thirty a freaking day to every kid who doesn't have a damn pencil. Really? So I yeah. give them out. So when I get three back at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah. I mean, you're, you're in school. <laughs> you're going to need a pencil every day. Yeah, it's like if you. Back <laughs> I feel like I never got pencils from my teacher. I feel like I was always like okay. bugging a student, like friend, like yeah. I need well, because teachers pencil. used to be in a sense of like, don't you? Yeah, dare you, ask you better for, not you ask be prepared. Me for a pencil. And yeah. I'm just like, it's a fucking pencil. 
It's a 12 year old kid. Of course, he yeah, forgot it's a like pencil. 12 Just give him a. You're gonna make him not learn all day and be pissed off because you didn't give a pencil. I'm with that 100. So I'm like, give him yeah. a pencil. It's like when you bet like 10 bucks on something. You play Keno. You bet 10 dollars and you win two back. You're like, all right, I won two bucks. Yeah, wow. Well, I like only eight. lost eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cool, Natalie. That was good. Good yeah. rolling rights. Flipping Do you have right, anything more to say rights. then that you missed half the discussion? Maybe. I love them. I think they're fantastic. I'm gobbling them up. This is my new polyomino <laughs> Yeah, this is that's kind exactly of thing. what I was going to say. This is your new polyomino. Yeah, this is like my new polyomino thing. I'm like excited to play all of them that I can. After playing, so Boomerang and Demeter, when I played those two, it was like, I, so it was kind of like Jeff. I was like, well, I've kind of seen them all. And then Boomerang and Demeter came out, and I was like, oh, these are pretty good. Whoa, that's kind of what I said. I was, yeah. I was these like, are this really might good. start piquing my interest in maybe finding a good middle Middleweight. I thing. think you would enjoy. Rawr. I think so. I think too. you would enjoy that. I think it's good. One I'll do. It's a good one. So yeah, I think that's a great note. So for the game of the episode, we are doing a little bit different here. Ooh, but same, but different, but same. Yep. The game that we play when we don't have a game to play. So yes. we still have not gotten this completed. So what we do is we take thirty games and we have to set the timer for three, three minutes. minutes. And normally we have Natalie read to Jeff. Jeff gets the games, or Jeff reads to Natalie, and Natalie gets the games. We're doing things a little different this time. Jeff prepared the list, and I am going to try to get Natalie to guess 30 games in three minutes' time. Now, Ooh. here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to get this in like two minutes. No, and no I'm probably, no I'm going to be like, we're probably going to do better so than you and like, me. Oh, that, those games always seem to go like that, where like the couple, like you'd think that they would no, do better, like, but then they like don't. Thing. It's all going to be like. This game we played together two days ago. Boom! This, this. That's true. If that stuff yours, happens, yours. then we can do it. But, but that's true. All right, are we ready to try this? Okay. I'm ready to start. Here we go. The timer. Are we ready, Natalie? Yes. All right, go ahead, Jeff. Whenever you're ready. Two. Yep. One. Go. Okay. Number one game of all time. Huge box game. I got rid of it. We have Jaws of the Lion. It's called uh, Gloomhaven. All right. Um, this is a game about birds. Wingspan. Yep. <laughs> this one is a game, a dice play, dice rolling worker placement game, and you're going onto this this planet, and you're um, on Mars. No, dice placement. Mars? Dice, dice placement. placement. So not Kingsburg, but Terramis. Okay, dice <laughs> placement. So you're up in space, and you are what? You're not a member of Earth. You are in Alien Frontiers. Okay, God, okay, thank God. Sorry. Okay, this is a game where you're pulling things out of uh, pressure. Lo- no, pulling. Uh, and yes, back and um, this is a game that we, you, me, and Jeff just played before the show. Demeter. Okay, this is a game um, that you've got these huge, chunky dice. It's a roll and write. We just talked about it. It's You're, uh, you're playing it. Dinosaur. Huge, I... chunk, oh. two, only two huge, chunky dice. We, did, we keep getting new cards for it. We got one for Rolling Realms. Ago. Yes, very good. Okay, this is a <laughs> game. It's called Seize the Day. Um, Carpe Diem. Yes, this is a game where you're in Australia and you're throwing this thing. What's that thing you throw throwing, right? Okay, this one is Jeff's favorite game. You played it at Nerdfest. Underwater Fest Cities. Yep, this is the game we just played uh, where, where um, it's like a one verse all, where you are Mind the management. one. Yep, okay. Um, this is a game that we played. We didn't really like it. Ben and M got it for us in the dice box. Oh, dice throne. You dice said dice. box, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, this one, you're pulling things out of the bag. You said it before, not Orion. quacks, but yep. Okay, this one is a game that we got. It's got the penis uh, thing where you put the, oh, the uh, things Luna in. Oh, Luna Capital? Yes. <laughs> this is a game. It's sitting right on the table there. We talked about it. You can play it ten times. It's like chewing bubblegum. Crisscross? Yep. This one game Jeff just talked about as one of his games where it's kind of like boy. a smaller version of a meteor, a bigger game. A smaller oh, version of a game Mark. he just talked about it. He just talked about it. Yes. This is a game that we've played where you got a bunch of interconnecting lines. It's a flipping. Uh, Metro X. Yes, very good. This is a game. It's not nine, but... 10. Yep. This is a game that Amanda <laughs> taught to both me and you and Jeff. Obsession. Yep. This is a game with a bunch of oh cards God. and you're putting them out in a grid and it's a cooperative game that we played and you you picked it as your cooperative game of the year. It's in a square box game. Yes. Um, this is a game where and I say to myself What a wonderful yes. world. Well, <laughs> wonderful world. Okay. A wonderful world. Yeah, sure, is that good fine. enough? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a game that we both played three times. <laughs> I hated it one time. You hated it another time. Pulsar, and it's a space game. 2849? Yes, yes, yes. This is a game that we played a bunch of times um, at Nerdfest. I loved it so much more than I did the Long other time shot? I played it. Oh, I loved uh, it so much. It's a social deduction game. Night of the Ninja. Yes, this is a game by Sorry We Are French that we just talked about on the show a little bit ago. It's a bigger game by Did Hachette. It's only got three letters in it, and we played it one Eek-y. time. Yes. Um, this is one of Jeff's favorite games and your favorite games. It's a dice placement game. <laughs> You're drafting these dice. And Sagrada? so, like, not, not dollars, but... Um, Cents? Uh, yeah, but what are another Coins? word for... Yes. Yes. Coimbra. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, this is our favorite our favorite game in the... in the. Okay, it's a cooperative game, and it's green, and it's a... Uh, a two-player version of this really Code famous game. Duet. Yes. Okay. This is a game where it's, I've only got twelve turns. The uh, magnificent. Yes. Okay. This is a, a, a polyamino <laughs> game where you're putting the dual layered boards. The project now. Yes. This is a game right there. You're drawing color pencils on the thing. Second chance. Yes. This is a game where you're you only got. Oh no, man! Uh, no! Uh, what? Did it make it? 
time. I felt like you were like we an auctioneer. Who left? Two 28. Left. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I felt like we were going uh, so fast. You were. Uh, the beginning. Three minutes goes by quick. Yeah. yeah. The beginning. It was Alien uh, Frontiers that took yeah. that, that killed us. Oh <laughs> I must have said dice placement two. over and over. Yeah. I played that game like five years ago. I'll give you the last two. Well, that's why it's on there because it's difficult. Mm-hmm. I'll give you the last two. Okay. Uh, this one, you are literally looking at like photographs of things and trying to. Pictures? Yep. And then the last one is um, you have a four leaf. Clo- so clover. Yep. Man. He's, I was like, he was sounds good. like he's like an auctioneer guy. He's like, like, didn't even take a breath. I don't usually play this one, so I was like, we got to try it. Me and Jeff are just like, um, it's this, it's like this. Yeah, but you've done that and still gotten to 28. You know what I mean? So, man, we were close. You're like out of breath. I am out of breath. I would be. That's why I don't play these games. That was fun. I thought we, those were great games. great I thought we, I was like, oh, we're gonna get this in plenty of time. I, when he was like, he was like one minute left, and I was like, oh, there's still like eight. And I was yeah. like, this might be tricky. You were halfway. I saw, I think 10 was number like 17, and you were about yeah. halfway with like, oh, so close. Um, about halfway on the time. Okay. So you were like, kind of right there. The Alien Frontier slowed you. That was the yeah. one. That was yeah. the one that didn't get us. It was great, though. It's a dice place worker placement game. You're like, um, Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Who knows? I know dice you say things. Places. Sometimes you just say stuff. That's, yeah. Sometimes, like, the mechanics like that, like, it doesn't click. For me, right away, you have to talk about more like the. Um, the yeah, I was like, I was like, if I talk about the game, because like, yeah. I, I was like, she hasn't played this, she's not gonna know. I'm like, I have to just like. Saying Kingsburg was the one that helped you, because that's, we had those two at the same time. Very dice placement, worker placement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Talking about all these blank and rights lately has really got me juiced up and my hose flowing again for gaming. I'm really into these lighter, easier to set up experiences lately, and it's just been so much fun. So I thought. Why not do games that take too long to set up next episode? And this episode will hijack and do our top five blank and write games. Okay? So we're going to go Jeff, me, Natalie with this one. I'm Jeff. Um, so, Jeff, hello. How are you? You want to hit us with your number five? Great. My number five is a newer game from Stonemaier, Rolling Realms. Ooh. Um, I just let the First of all, the dice are really cool. I also think that... Yes, there is a, at some point a finite number of combinations of cards, but you play the game in chunks of three, right? So you have three different cards every single time. Yep. And I'm not going to play that game enough for that mix to keep repeating itself. Yep. But every time mm-hmm. it feels different. Like I might play with Wingspan and Scythe and Baby Scythe once, <laughs> and then next time I'll play with Wingspan and Pendulum and something else, and that experience of dice rolling feels different. The, the combinations feel different, and I like that a lot. Uh, I like that uh, there's the combinations and the resources. So to get that cascading feel of like combos and combos and combos, like Natalie's combos, her favorite. Thing you her can spend uh, these little resources that you're gathering, right? Yeah. Um, or do you save them for the point one points, which honestly matter in yeah. that game? Yeah, for sure. I never would have thought that like a point one of a resource or saving a little tiny resource <laughs> yeah. would matter. Like, that's so weird. But that time, it, the course oh, of like yeah. when you're within a point or two of each other, those little things matter. So yeah. those decisions. He I must like have added game. those on afterward and been like, we we almost need like point one. Yeah. You so know, in this, cool. and then it works really well. I yeah. agree with you. So that's 100%. my number five. Rolling Very rounds. cool. Number five for me is a game I've only played one time. I liked it this much. It, we we just bought it, like just recently. We almost played it. We didn't play it. It's still sitting on our table, and it's Cartographers. Ooh. So yeah. obviously, we I know that like the one time blue at... is the land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, we meant to play it. One time at Gen Con. It was Gen yeah. Con we played it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joe, I think Joe bought it at Gen Con. We played it. I really enjoyed it, and I bought it again because I really I'm juiced up. I want to play this sucker. Juice. That's my number five, Cartographers. Natalie, what about you? What's your number five? Um, I'm going to go with Second Chance. All right. I heard like, of that one. Yeah. This is, it's kind of more of like a relaxing coloring game. I mean, you don't have to use it as a coloring game, but we like to. We <laughs> like to p- pull out different color pencils, mm-hmm. and it's just really easy, and and um, it's relaxing to try to color in, color in your little square and see who gets the most points. The end. The end. The <laughs> end. All right, well, you can't say better than that. All right, Jeff, what is your number four? My number four is a game that I've only played once, just recently, and it's Boomerang, whatever edition you have. It was Boomerang Europe. Europe. Yeah. I don't care if it's Australia or That's U.S. or I something. Got. I just bought um, Australia. Yeah, I don't really care what country yeah, you're boomeranging fun. around. Yeah. But I liked the drafting mechanic of it. It felt different. It didn't feel like this roll and then write something down and roll and write something down. Because, yeah. again, I've played those. I don't care about those anymore. But this had that extra thing of, you know, what do I pass? Like, oh, Ryan has all these 
all the Scandinavian countries. Right. Maybe I'll off. Maybe I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to pass on that. And then the last card you get. You try to play your opponent right because they might have a low one at the beginning, and yeah. now you, you know you're going to give them see a high what the boomerang one, yeah. number is. Um, and I think it's cool. You're all kind of playing to compete over main goals, but you have goals on your own paper. So weighing which one you do, I think, is just it's just cool. It was something yeah. that I didn't expect out of a blank and right game, and really enjoyed it. I agree with you 100. percent I really agree. Awesome. Number four for me is a game we just played very recently. Even talked about it on the show with Natalie, and that is called Dinosaur Island. E. Rawr. And right. Dinosaur Island, Rawr and right. Makes my number four. Makes my top five. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was great. I really think that uh, with more plays, it will just kind of cement uh, into that spot. Maybe even shoot up a little higher. Ooh. Oh. Shoot it up. So we'll see. But that's my number four. Dinosaur Island, Rawr and right. What about Voice. you, Natalie? What's number four? Uh, my number four is Silver and Gold. Silver and like Gold. Them. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, it's really light, but it's like, it's just a f- I don't know. We played the last time we played it. We were like just sitting on the couch, like watching TV or something, and playing it. And it was just like light enough where like you don't have you to like have your full attention and like thinking cap on, but but gamey enough that it's not just like a nothing game, you know. And plus, it's got those really cool like mat cards with the that wipe off with the dry erase. It is kind of like more fun writing on those. Yeah, <laughs> even it's like satisfying. Yeah, because it doesn't like smear. Yeah. Or is it schmear? Schmear. <laughs> schmear. <laughs> All right, Jeff, what is your number three? I have number so I'm leaving I'm leaving Hadrian's wall off the list. I'm leaving Demeter off the list. I did really like those two. I'm leaving them off because yeah, you it's gonna be on your list. list. You guys, Highlight some other ones. You guys have mm-hmm. sucked that one off a few times. We have in the blown line. the yeah, shit so, out of it. Um number three is kind of a cool game called Lantern's Dice. I yeah, that was a cool game. Yeah, yeah Chris Bryan. Um, the, the, again, the unique thing about that game was uh, perspective also matter of how you're looking at, uh, the dice and how mm-hmm. you place them on the your, your mat. So the, the first person actually gets to roll and then orient the, the little tray, right? I think that's yep. kind of cool. And it also yeah. throws in a little bit of polyomino with you and yep. filling in some mm-hmm. spaces and having some cool combos. Um, pretzels good snack you know good snack mm-hmm. it's favorite snack for, <laughs> Natalie's some, favorite. for some people some for people sure. it's their favorite i don't really like it that much but Natalie it's, loves it Natalie loves it. it's like Natalie's favorite but i've favorite. never really had one but now yeah, it's her favorite that's great so lantern's her. dice Not is me. a cool game if you've never played it try it that was really fun i liked that it happened. that was a good yeah that was yeah. good that was good stuff. <laughs> well because like jeff whipping his head around like what's going <laughs> this on is great here combo and i was just like honestly like confused like Oh, I don't think I've himself? ever had one of these in my entire life. Wait, I, when I when you threw him on the Ryan. seat, I was like, I was like, he got himself combos. That's weird. I've never seen him eat those. Hey, babe, these oh, are babe. for you. Babe, babe, guess what? These babe. are for you. Babe, 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 <laughs> babe, <laughs> babe. You gotta listen, babe. I went into the store and I was walking around. I was like, what do I want? And I said, you know what? What does my babe want? <laughs> And I thought about you, babe. I thought about you in the gas station. I thought about you the whole time while I was in there. I might have been away from you, but I thought about you, babe. And I said, what's my babe's favorite snack? And boom, I found some combos. Here's your favorite snack, babe. And then Natalie goes, I've never had one of these fucking things in my entire life, you idiot. Lesson is, go in the gas station next time. Don't stay in the car. <laughs> Just like, what? what? This was Wait great. a minute, what? <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> Number three for me is what I needed after Natalie said that, and I needed a second chance uh, at getting her a snack she wanted. That is my number three second chance. Again, for the meta reasons we talked about earlier, it is just super fun. I love, first of all, I love polyominoes, yeah. and I'm really loving blank and rights, and so this kind of marries the two together. Same with uh, a game like Lantern's Dice, but this one you get to just, you, you don't get to, you can do it with any game you want, I guess. But we always use colored pencils, and so it just makes it way more more fun coloring di- looking at it at the end versus just using a pencil or one pen or something like that so that is my number three second chance also it's uve second chance is great you know uve. it's just a, it's just a really good game natalie what about you what is number three uh my number three is twa dice twa dice twa dice i'm like twa the dice game what is this game? yeah it's just twa dice twa dice um ryan and i played it again recently and he does not he's not a big fan of this game but i really like it still um it's got the big chunky dice. It's got the see-through mm-hmm. dice. So yep. like one cool part about it is um, when you place the dice, it becomes the color of the tile that you place it on. Um, there's just a lot of cool things you can do to to you know manipulate the dice and colors. There's um, a lot of tough decisions. Um, it also slightly feels tight. And I don't know. I just really like Wait. this game. It's... Mm-hmm. it's uh, I'm not sure if I'd quite call it medium, but like if it's, I'd say it's close to medium. It's medium, I would say. Yeah. yeah. As medium at, for a roll and write game, I think yeah. it's medium. 
They should have an expansion, the ladies. Ladies dice. of twat ice. <laughs> twa ladies dice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, we've come to number two. Number two is a game called Welcome to. Welcome to. Oh, good good placement there. Oh, I should have had a second two. chance Welcome at two. two. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So go. I love second chance also. I'm just trying to. Yeah. Uh, Welcome to, I like. I'm I think to repeat too. Yeah. I think that was one. That was one of the first ones that I played that was kind of above the. The light ones, like yeah. above. Well, that was maybe the mo- the well, first flip and right. Yeah, that was like, like really popular. Oh, okay. So flip, I get three choices of what I get to do. I think it's three, mm-hmm. whatever. It's and I get to do both of them on the card, or I don't know if I did one, whatever. I get choices on the cards. I kind of fill out this kind of cute little neighborhood. Um, yeah. They've expanded that endlessly. I think they have like Halloween maps, and they have Welcome to Vegas, and they have Welcome to the Moon. I think isn't recently. there like Welcome to Hell or something? It's like, yeah. zombies it's like something like that. It's like Welcome. Yeah, I'm, that's fine. Yeah, El Diablo. Yeah, El Diablo is there. <laughs> oh, you write your El Diablo. Flip the El Diablo card, you lose. <laughs> so yeah, I I just think that's cool, and I I think this just can keep going. You can just throw maps at it, and it can people can. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So Welcome to is my number right. two. Very good. Number two for me is a game that Jeff mentioned that he wasn't going to put on his list because he was going to, you know, we've been sucking his dick a lot, and I'm going to suck it again. It's called Demeter. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's a little Demeter. I'm really, really, really excited to play the expansion content, or even there's like another map that it comes with that's like the same as the basic one, but it just switches a couple things around a little bit, and so I'm excited to play that, which is a different way to play just that. Yeah. I also think the replayability is extremely high in this one for those those uh, scoring tiles that are sort of reminiscent of like Isle of Sky E, where they come out differently each time there's four different ones and they're you know sorted differently each game which is gonna again it's gonna make the way that you play the game different every play the things you prioritize are gonna be different every play based on those scoring tiles and i think it has enough in it that it just really it just blew my socks off and i really like it and that's demeter natalie what about you what is your number two well i'm not gonna say my real number two because i'm pretty sure it's ryan's number one so i was trying to come up with another one um that i even remember I'm just gonna go with um, well, crisscross. Enjoy crisscross, it. yeah. yeah. Crisscross. She loves you crisscross. Love this crisscross you game. I, girl, all the time. I like love it so much. You just much. put it, it as number up, two it comes on up your a lot. top you do five. Say crisscross a lot. You love that game, That's, babe. It's basically like a step above like tic tac toe, pretty much. You I've just, never, I've never even it's seen so this game. Little yeah, it's so little light. It's the good doctor. It's Kenito. basically like you're just you're rolling these dice that have different shapes on them, and you're filling the shapes into the square, and you're trying to get like. Um, Bingo. Multiples, Re- multiples of the same shape in like diff- in rows and columns, and then you get points in the rows and columns. Bingo. It's just mm. like so little and and light, but it's pretty Very fun. Little light. Yeah, yeah, it's a good game. Awesome. All right, uh, and now you can't say that you don't like it that much. It's number two on your top yep. five blanket records of, of all time. time. Jeff, what is your number one? My number one. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go straight up OG quicks. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Fuck it. That's a good game. Quick. That's dude. a fun ass game. We played the shit out of that game. We play the and all you do is like we got ten minutes left the game night. Let's play quick. Well it's cool because you have the one it's, column, you have to go low to high, and the other yeah. one you have to go high to low. And you just like it's just so simple, it's mindless. You have turns on other people's turns, so everybody gets a chance to roll some dice. But you also are playing on other people's turns. It again, it's not it's probably the easiest of the rolling rights. But it also is the one that kind of, for our group anyway, was like the first one. Yeah, it started yeah. it for us. So it was like, this is this is what all these simple roll and rights are going to be compared to. And do I want to play crisscross instead of quicks? I don't know. I've never played crisscross. But every time <laughs> I get one, that's what I did. Yeah. Um, but now maybe with some of these heavier ones, that change that should yep, change my mentality. Sure. Yes. But if you're going to make a light one, it needs to, for me, it needs to be better than quicks. And quicks is so simple and easy, and I played it a million times that I'll just keep playing it over and over again. So you better... Better bring it. Yep, I hear you. Knock out quicks. I hear you. For me, the one, the one that I played that knocked out quicks for me was um, Ganshon's clever. Yeah, that was. I was mm-hmm. thought that was going to be on one of your lists, and I didn't. So you it. didn't put it on. But yeah. that was that's it was, one yeah. of my yeah. favorite mention for I me honestly, for sure. I don't remember it. Well, it's coming back. I was. Are you um, serious? You so bought it again? number one for me is a game no, called Hadrian's Wall. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that one. It's it's definitely a blank and right. No, we definitely still have Hadrian's Wall in the collection. No, I mean the that thing. is definitely <laughs> still here. Um, and it is one of my not just favorite blank and right games. I I think it is one of my favorite games. I think if I were to do my should pub, pub meeple, meeple I should probably do it again. I think that would beat out a lot. It would beat off a lot it of beat games. Off a lot. <laughs> it would beat off yeah. so many games, making its way into the minge of my top ten. Yeah, I think is what's going to happen. I'm going to switch out Gonshow and Clever and Lantern's Dice got swapped. All right. Boom. Lantern's yeah. Dice, you're out. You're out. Gonshow and Clever, Clever, you're out. Yeah. Have you played the Suck other it. two? There's two Cubed more. Cubed and other ones? No. Yeah, Cubed is the third one, and then... That, That's another thing. If you're going to have all these lineup, 
first of all, just fucking don't. Okay, just <laughs> stop it. I don't want gonna, all three don't. of those things. Yeah. Just, it better be better than the first one because if you're not, you're just wasting your time. Yeah. yeah. So Gone Show and Clever is good. And again, people are probably like, oh, the second through one are way better. I'm like, yeah. but is it is it that much yeah. better for you a 20 minute game? You don't typically that I hear spend about it? those versus Gone Show and Clever. I yeah, feel like I've never heard that of one's those sweet. Ones. I do like that one because yeah. again, you're playing other people's turn. You draft that whatever. Yeah, I don't remember that one. It's cool. It's Natalie, your cool. number one is not Hadrian's Wall. No, I, I mean, I love Hadrian's I Wall. Rawr. That was my number two. But yeah, you're right. My number one is Dinosaur Island. Rawr and right. <laughs> that game was so great. And it, it was, was like the perfect one. weight and the perfect was time. And it was just back. really fun. <laughs> and I'm excited to play it. It's funny because as we were playing the game, I was doing the audibly like, oh, wow. Oh, I like this. I'm having a lot of fun. And you were you were kind of like, yeah, me too. You know, and I was I wasn't like sure how, how you felt. Like yeah, it was like, it was <laughs> yeah. almost a Jeff thing where I used to think that meant like, oh, he doesn't like it, but now I know he means exactly what he says. <laughs> I like it; it's good. Where you, I was kind of like, hmm, does she hate this thing? Yeah, well, I wasn't I, sure. Well, I, I was like, like do you Uber like it as much? <laughs> I felt like I, it was not one of those games where like, I mean, it was our first play, so I didn't fully know what I felt in the middle of it. You yeah. know, it wasn't until we completed after you beat the shit out of me that you were like, oh, the, oh, I do this like the greatest game. One of the best parts about it was the end. You yeah, know? winning? <laughs> no. Totaling up our score. What's he total up our score? Wow. That was my favorite part of the game. game. <laughs> no. Not, but like the last round was the most fun round for me. And Right. That was the one where Because finally won. all that stuff. Yeah. yeah that, right. that is the best feeling. And then I got to do more things than I even thought I could do. Yeah. Yeah. Even after the game was over, we were both like, oh, we should have done this. Like, there was just things we literally forgot. Not that, like, oh, I could have done that. It was like, oh, I was supposed to have done this. And yeah. so we both did that. We we're like, oh, we both get a couple more points here. Yeah. So um, uh, let me some. go through a couple yeah. honorable mentions. Yeah, I got some, too. So I just want to kind of go through. I've played 26 really? different type of blank and rights. Quick, Jeez, Scan, Chance, Clever, Crisscross, Second Chance, On Tour, which is good. On Tour is good. Yeah. Rolling Realms, my, Demeter, Boomerang Europe, Hadrian's Wall, Welcome to, Cartographers, Roland Wright, Roll Through oh, the right. Ages, Fleet that. the Dice Game, Twad Dice, Castle of Burgundy the Dice Game, Cosmic Run Rapid Fire, Tag City, Lanterns Dice, Medici the Dice Game, Rolling America, Sonora, ugh, Yahtzee, Silver <laughs> and Gold, and Super Mega Yucky Box. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of those, too. Probably oh, yeah, maybe five less or Tag something. Tag City. Like that. that was a fun Tag one. I like Tag City a lot. Mention. That's a good one. Yep, Tag City's on it. On Tour, I really like, too. Those two, are, I think, are really good. Um, are ones that I would reach for a lot. Uh-huh. King Domino Duel um, is pretty good. Mm. Second Chance was on my list. I also saw that Second Chance is like a new cover. Yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. I this like is the original much. one. I like no. the original cover I better. Do too. Uh, Castle Party, I think with more plays, right. might, might jump that up yet. that mm-hmm. list. I also have, I have a list of five. Let's define these. Are these roll and rights? Okay, let's okay. hear it. Okay, or blank and rights. Sorry. Yeah, blank and yeah. rights. Is Hive Mind a blank and right? You flip a card and you write down an answer. I don't know because... <laughs> I guess you technically are writing. <laughs> you yeah. are flipping a card and then writing. I feel like maybe. that's a great question. I do feel like I for feel the like blank no. and write genre, that, what about you have to like cross off and code stuff seven, off. Code 777. Code 777. Again, is that a... Oh, because you are ticking off those boxes? <laughs> Ooh. I have these weird You ones. know what? Have you, did you go to Borgian Gate to see if they list that as a mechanism? I don't know. Oh, go. no. They are listed as a mechanism or not a... It's like paper and pencil or something. But uh, it's not a mechanism. I do think else. there should be a distinction here. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It you're right. What about So Clover? I thought that too. Yeah, I, I would say no. I'd I would say, say no, no too, but I thought it was funny. What about mind management? A move and write. I, oh. Kind of. Or that would be letters from White Chapel. Only, so only one of. person writes in that game. It or does. Any Sherlock game where you flip a page and then write down <laughs> yeah, your notes. You write down yeah. Your notes. <laughs> yeah, that's a great call. I definitely think that it's just named poorly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. But what else would you name? But yeah, that's really funny. Yeah. But yeah, there is definitely a distinction, I, I, I think, in all those. But that is really funny because <laughs> you're trying to argue against it and you're like, well, uh, you're like you, I know. You, know, why, you gotta like uh, check off a box. Well, you're, you're like, okay, code 777. Right, it's like, oh. Oh, I'm checking box well, colors. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but no, man. Yeah, race markers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got some... yeah, what's your honorable mentions? Um, nothing that you guys haven't already said. I thought you were going to be like, nothing you guys have heard of. Nothing. Well, all the ones that Ryan read were all the ones that played. Yeah, so you probably played those as well. But Same any that sp- that stick out that you would like to give a shout out to? Um, I don't remember or anything. Tag City. She doesn't remember shit. Yeah, Tag City, Tag City. Hadrian's Vault, Rolling Realms I liked a lot. Um, and Boomerang was really fun too. Yeah. I'm excited to get that played now that we Yeah, me too. It. Yeah, we have the Australia version, which was the original version. It's a redone Ooh. version of the original version. So that is our <laughs> top five <laughs> blank and rights in our blank and right heavy episode. And that's going to do it for that.
So that's going to do it for us tonight, everybody. If you'd like to get a hold of us, you can find us on Instagram at GameCasters or at Mad Board Gamer. Both of those accounts service the podcast. We also have a Facebook group. Just search GameCasters and you'll find us there. You can also email us at the GameCasters podcast at gmail.com. If you like the show, we'd love it if you consider giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts or anywhere else you listen that allows you to rate us. We've also got a Patreon. If you want to support the show, feel free to head on over to patreon.com forward slash the GameCasters. There's also a merch store where you can find all sorts of different game casters mad board gamer gateway gear so head on over to the gateway network.com forward slash store please follow me and consider subscribing on twitch at twitch.tv forward slash game casters so for natalie and jeff the mad board gamer i'm ryan and you have been listening to the game casters good night everybody Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Bum 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 b